Hey everyone, and welcome to Comics from the Multiverse, the DC Comics podcast from Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter, and I am joined, unfortunately not by Matt. He had to take this week off. It's a crying shame. We should have a moment of silence that he's missing this uh, important episode, because we had a lot of big news. Um, so I'll be talking by myself, basically. Uh, Connor might interject every so often, so he's here. I, I feel like I didn't get anywhere near as much sympathy as that last week when I wasn't here. Did did you listen and find out? Not not yet. I, well, I meant to, d- but I haven't d- had time. Well, but... well, as far as you're aware, you got a, a an amazing. Basically, it was basically an eulogy. I basically I'm, I'm acted as if sure you were it dead. Wasn't. Maybe I was hoping. You know, I'm I'm was... I'm pretty sure it was like ah, good riddance. Eh, uh, uh, it was it was funny actually because Matt Matt just had a thing. He had to leave by a certain time, and he's like, "Okay, we record earlier," and we couldn't. So it was basically Matt or Connor, and since Connor missed last week, it just made sense to swap them. But also, being Connor meant we could push it even later and watch the WonderCon panel that they streamed live with some news, so we could actually talk about the news this week and not have to, you know, wait a whole yeah, week. We, we could get it while it's a, a fresh hot take. <laughs> yeah, wait a whole week and do it next week when it's like really old. So, so that is the upside to beat Connor being here. That is the only upside to Connor being the one who's here. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's worth noting with the WonderCon stuff, which we'll, we'll get into obviously soon. But and that's not first. We got other news before we get to that. Right, right. We we just had the panel. We haven't had any of the. You know, you always get the little interview tidbits oh, yeah, here that, or there. There, there may be a little nuggets from elsewhere from interviews and stuff. Uh, although Snyder couldn't help himself during the panel, he was dropping lots of nuggets he wasn't supposed to. So there'll be oh. more on that later. Uh, but yeah, so obviously we're talking about DC Comics, we do have books to talk about this week, that'll be coming way later though, we've, we've got stuff before we get to that. Uh, but coming up this week we got Batman 43, we got Superman 43, we got Justice League 41, Green Lanterns 43, Nightwing 41, Batwoman 13, Super Sons 14, Aquaman 34, Brave and the Bold, Batman and Wonder Woman number 2, and I believe Connor has Connor's Corner for the month, Red Hood and the Outlaws. What issue you on? I didn't write that down. It, it, it was 16. Issue 16, there you go, how exciting is that? So that's all the stuff coming up in the show. But like I said, lots of news. And I'm going to do all the other stuff before we even get to the WonderCon. I want you to save the big big for last. Because uh, uh, we had solicits at the start of the week as well. Uh, and, oh yeah, we did, didn't we? And various other things. So uh, We also had the, the, the sales for February this week. So just quickly, I'll, I'll make this quicker than usual. Because you know, we, we got a lot of other juicy news to get through. Uh, but yeah, so for February, um, dollar share Marvel were 3486 uh, DC were 31.79%, so kind of the, the normal there. Uh, unit share Marvel did win actually that as well, just slightly. It was 36.94 to 36.61. Uh, so they just narrowly got that this uh, this past month. Uh, but hey, so just, just for funds, what do you think number one was in February? Top uh, selling comic book of February. Was there a Doomsday Clock in February? There was not. Okay. Then Metal. I, I guess I'll take that. Yeah. Whale Hunt, one shot. That's number yeah, one. Yeah, whatever. The, the, whatever yeah. Metal issue it was. Yeah. Uh, number two was a Marvel book. What Marvel book do you think got to number two in February? Uh, was there something new? There was a new issue one? There was a number one, indeed, yeah. Uh, is, it, is it the the X Men book from Taylor? Yeah, X Men Red. There you go. Yeah, there we go. I couldn't remember the name of it. Mm. And then uh, three and four were Batman forty and forty one, as you'd expect. Yeah. Uh, number five was Walking Dead one seven six. Uh, number six was Batman White Knight. Uh, number five, number seven was Peter Parker Spectacular Spider Man. Number three hundred, uh, which was a six dollar book. Uh, number eight was Star Wars forty three. Number nine was Infinity Countdown Prime. Number one. God damn it, Marvel. Uh, number 10 was Amazing Spider-Man, number 796. Uh, what is notable uh, about these sales is they're actually kind of depressingly low. Uh, the number one book is 101,373, which uh, from an article I glanced at earlier in the week is the lowest number one book since 2011. Yeah, uh, they're usually around the 150-ish mark. Um, and then the other depressing part, though, so that's number one, not the number ten book. So the number ten book, the top ten. So this is like number one, hundred one thousand. Number ten is already down to fifty five thousand. It's already Oof. halved, half, almost halved the uh, the amount by the time you're at number ten, which is pretty. See, I, I typically overall. expect about half because I expect to start at around one fifty and be down to like the seventy five range. Well, yeah, but we already but, start down quite low. But it's, when you start low, it's much worse. Yeah. Uh, but not only that, there's like n- number uh, nine and eight are also in the fifties. So it's not even just like that one's the first fifty. Yeah. No, that's a shame. So um, rough month. I'm glad to see White Knight selling really well though, because I think 
that's the sort of thing that could just not even though it's Batman in the name it could just not sell I like it as much as you do so <laughs> I mean I'm, if anything I'm going oh it's selling because it's Batman that's fine whatever fair enough fair <laughs> enough <laughs> I, I think that's selling more than other books that deserve to be up higher is basically what I'm saying okay I mean I don't know about that why, why, why can't you just agree to disagree? You have to sit, put in the little because, passive aggressive because, uh, dig. Because there was no Mr. Miracle in February, so I'll, I'm just going to let it slide. Yeah, but there's still lots of books that were better than it. So. All right, all right. Uh, but yeah, so we'll talk about uh, news. So we had, we had solicits this week. I, I took down some notes from the solicits. Rather than having big chunks of solicits in front of me, uh, I, I just took down the... The, the, the ability points of things that I thought were worth mentioning. Uh, one is that Mr. Miracle's skipping the month of June. Yeah. Uh, due to Mitch Gerrard's being a, a new father, and that's taken up some time. Uh, there was have a nice you, have fun- you seen how much the dude works? No. He, he's always talking about on Twitter. He, bu- he goes out to, like, Starbucks or whatever in the morning. He buys a coffee there and then, and then he gets one of the cold ones and puts it in the fridge for the evening every day for, for when he's working. It's some long hours. Now, I'm agreeing with Tom King on Twitter. He called him a slacker for falling behind. I mean, does that do? <laughs> uh, some fun exchanges. There was also some fun exchanges between Jason Aaron and Chip Jarsky, actually, this week uh, from Marvel. Uh, I won't go into it. Let's just say that we're making fun of each other for having Fantastic Four books that don't have all four members in it. And uh, What was what's Aaron's book? Ar- Ar- what Aaron's book was missing He's a doing... character. Really? He's doing the, the Avengers one, right? Yeah, but it was missing someone. And Chip was giving him shit for. It. He's like, I thought the guy who who uh, wrote a Fantastic Four bit with only two characters in it would understand. Yeah, okay. it was an amusing exchange. Uh, anyway, so no Mister Miracle in June. Um, bit of worrying text in New Superman's solicit for June that calls the Justice League of China's mission out at their final mission. Uh, that said, I mean, like eighteen was supposed to be the end of the book. Then he continued it. So if it is the end, I mean, we can't complain too much. We're kind of on borrowed time. But at the same time, it could just be wording that's scary, and it's not actually that bad. It's fine. It could be. I think it, if the positive way to read it would be it's the final official mission as a team, and you know mm. something happens after. But it, it could be that um, t- DC, of course, typically do say when it's the final issue. They don't just. I mean, it, it could just be a case of this is the final thing, and then there's like an epilogue issue. But the yeah, up. yeah, but, it's happened a few times. But hey, so. Mild concern for that, because we do love that book. But hey, uh, next up, a couple of different creators on a couple of books uh, for, for the month. Uh, Hope Larson is not in the issue of Batgirl engine. Uh, Sean Aldridge is writing the book, which is, um, you know, uh, concerning at a glance, but it doesn't look like it's the start of a run, it doesn't look like it's the start of an arc, it looks like a one, one and done, so it's potentially just a fill-in. Yeah, there's no part one listed in the solicit, which uh, is... Usually a good sign. Looking at Hope Larson's Twitter on the day of solicits, there was no comments from her about her leaving, so I don't think that she is. Because uh, that's the sort of thing where once the solicits are out, people will ask them and they'll maybe say something about it. Uh, yeah. So it seems like it's fine. Uh, then the other one is we have another potential, Just it's just a fill-in, because the writers actually said on their, their website that this is just a, a two-issue thing. Uh, but Mayor Gred Scott uh, is going to do a couple issues of Green Arrow, two, two, two-part story. Uh, and that's start. That's going to be in June, July. So the, the, whoever the next actual proper full time writer is in Green Arrow, we're not getting until at least August now. Yeah, it's just disappointing because I kind of want to know. But you, you want to know, but I mean, if they're rolling out these new teams, obviously we're going to be talking about some new books uh, later on. It just kind of means okay, they're, they're starting some stuff later in the summer. They're, 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 it they're, does. They're spreading th- their their new things out. I think my biggest concern is it. It starts to feel like the Wonder Woman situation. Where it was like, oh, we got a fill in here, we're going to do a fill in there, and now it kind of feels like we've just settled into this unfortunate groove. That that is entirely possible, um, but I, I just wonder if there's a reason why they're waiting for the whoever the new writer is going to be. Like, hopefully, the, the, yeah. There could be a reason. Maybe they've got another book they have to finish before they get there. Yeah, uh, yeah. is the obvious option. Uh, if it's someone who they're, they're stealing from Marvel or something, maybe they have to wait mm-hmm. till the contract's up, so they're just doing some fill-ins because oh, they're taking Green Arrow in August or September, whenever it's going to be. Well, I don't know where I was going just before you, uh, Connor's computer turned off by itself. So, you know, I think I was done anyway. So, yeah, Green Arrow, different writer. <laughs> to, yes. to a short arc. Uh, 
So, and then the other thing, it seems to be that Christopher Sebula is doing some stuff on Harley Quinn. Um, and, yeah, so... Yeah, he, he, he recently worked on Injustice Ground Zero. Okay, cool. So... Uh, so he's he's doing some Harley Quinn. Uh, you know, on on Harley Quinn, I saw that starting. I think in issue forty two, they're doing a, an old lady Harley thing, and that cracked me up. Yeah, yeah, that popped up uh, a couple of days ago. I'll be honest, yeah. I kind of glossed over it in terms of putting this just uh, together. Cause no, was, no, I just thought, yeah, yeah. I'll mention it because like, okay, maybe I'll check that out. Uh, so, so that was things from the solicits. There was a couple of things about the Titans and the solicits, but I'm going to save that now because I feel like it'll be more relevant uh, when we get to some of the panel stuff in a few minutes. So I'll, I'll leave that as it is. Uh, just also mention, this news also came out this week. Uh, Frank Miller signed a five-project deal with DC. His Superman Year One book for Black Label is uh, the first of those stories. And he's also going to be doing another story they announced this week, which is a young adult uh, graphic novel starring Carrie Kelly. That uh, terrifies me. With <laughs> art by Ben Caldwell. I, I, I don't know what a young adult... <laughs> story from Frank Miller is uh, like 30% less cocaine, I don't know uh, but I that's... think it depends which, which area of the young adult market is he aiming at, because I, I think there's an argument to be made that a lot of his work appeals to that sort, uh, to a, a sect of, of young adult people, you know like the, 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 the teens who go, oh that's edgy, you know that's like a, uh, yeah, there's, there is a sect of that who, who see Dark Knight Returns and be like, yeah that's the Batman I want to read Aye, more so, yeah, more Look, I'm, I'm, look, the young adult, the edgy teens. I'm just saying, it's not entirely unfeasible that that could be the market that they aim for with his work. And I'm not saying that they've got taste. I'm saying it's it it's, exists. Starring Carrie Kelly is an odd choice for that, though. If that if that's what they're going for, it is. That's it an is. odd choice. But hey ho. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, but that, that was the stuff pre-panel. Uh, well, obviously, we also had the official announcement of the Justice League book, uh, but it was exactly everything we knew from before. So Yeah. Some nice covers, though. Especially, oh, yeah. uh, especially like the cover for issue two. Yeah, issue two, because uh, issue two is the Jimenez one. Uh, and it, yeah. is, uh, it is exactly the, the animated series lineup on that. They took away Aquaman and Cyborg for that cover just so they, they could have the, the animated series lineup. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I blame them. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. Uh, although Cyborg might not be staying with the main team as much as we think or we thought of before because given what we found out the the, the panel today. Uh, um, so I think knows? that'll take us on to Z panel itself. I'm going to go pretty much in order of what they did uh, here. Yeah. I, I only caught the end part of the panel, so yeah. I, this uh, the news. The first stuff is going to be news to me. Uh, well, there wasn't a whole bunch of news. Um, there was a so the first thing they did was to talk about DC Zoom and Inc. And they brought out a couple of people to talk about the books. The, every like uh, imprint had a whole little video package to like sort of like right. say here, right? So here's some bits of the writers talking uh, about their books. Uh, the only sort of notable thing, or the two notable things, is the the DC Zoom video package kind of snuck in another book that I don't think we knew about before uh, called Dear Justice League where it's kind of a pretend thing where people have written in to like, various Justice League members like you know like a like a yeah. questions thing in a newspaper or a magazine or uh, back of a magazine and it's you know the, the, the Justice League responding to these like an agony art sort ki- of thing kind of but it's still, it's still a graphic novel of some kind uh, yeah they showed a little bit of art from it. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, honestly, it wasn't necessarily actual Justice League members. It was like just any character from DCU, basically. But well, fair enough. Uh, I mean, okay, cool. Oh, that's, that's not a bad idea. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I didn't quite catch who was working on that because, like, I didn't realize that we were talking about a new book until they started showing like panels and describing the plot. I'm like, wait, what was this? <laughs> um, uh, so, but that, that was the thing that sort of snuck in there because I even said to Matt, "Is that is, is that a new thing? I don't remember that." He's like, "Yeah, I don't remember that either." So, uh, so that seems to be new. Uh, the other thing they dropped at the end of this is that uh, they've pretty much delayed all the books because uh, we're meant to start later this year. Uh, but they basically they had the uh, the editor of the line out and she just said, "Yeah, we're going to push them all back and we're going to start spring 2019 because we want to get them all right." So, uh, apparently, Zoom and Inc are not going to be starting until spring next year. That's a little disappointing. I was looking forward to that. They were due to start around what September, October. Uh, yeah. Uh, Takara was out. She was talking about a Harley Quinn book. Where Harley Quinn's a teenager. Did we know about that one? 
Yeah, it was a Harlequin Breaking Glass, I think it's called. Oh, okay. I don't think we knew. Do, I don't think we knew that she was a teenager. Yeah, she's a teenager, and she's in a house full of drag queens. I think was the was, was what I remember from her her talking. I'll be honest. It kind of just sounds like the Harley Quinn series that that we just had. So, she's a teenager. But she's a teenager. So I'm yeah. not dumb down. Yeah. I do like her work though, so I mean that's that's, that's yeah. a thing. Uh, then they had the black label uh, part of the, the show. The, the guy, the editor of that, who's also the editor of uh, the Vertigo books, came out. He's talking about them. Uh, what I mean, most of it was just kind of stuff we already knew. There was some fantastic art of a couple of them showing up. The the Behermo book mm. with that uh, it was up here you know, with Azarello. Uh, we saw some of the Gotham skylines and that it looked really really pretty. Uh, but the one key thing here was that the black label books in graphic novel form won't necessarily have the traditional comics trim size. Uh, they, they mentioned bigger, uh, bigger like traditional graphic novel size, and I wasn't sure what that meant. But Didio specifically said the word wider, so I think they're going to be a different shape. Okay, I'm down. Well, because when they first said bigger, I thought, all right, so they're going to be deluxe. That was my thought. <laughs> They'll just be bigger. <laughs> yeah. But, but no, apparently the, the trim size is a bit different. Uh, so uh, maybe not all of them, but certainly some of them are. C- certainly the Azarello one is going to be. Yeah. Given I mean, I'm, I'm down. Uh, so that was that, and that kind of like rolled into Vertigo, which was mainly talking about Sandman universe, and there was a lot of jokes about you know how to cut the name. Uh, all the video packages had all the the writers just sort of like they they clearly got them all in the office at, you know one weekend and interviewed a bunch of them for these packages. Uh, for the Sandman stuff, though, Neil Gaiman, like, they all had, like, a retreat in, like, what they said, it was in New Orleans, but maybe, like, a month or two ago. Yeah, I know it was New Orleans, I missed this part, yeah. but I, I know I know Scott Snyder was complaining that he couldn't get there. Yeah, he, he wasn't allowed to come because he's not part of the line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he, like, the video package for that one has Neil Gaiman actually walk out into, like, this alleyway as a VT, and it felt like the start of a paranormal documentary, because the way he walked out and the music that was playing, I was like, uh, is, I can see it. He's, he's, got, he's got the long he, coat on. And I'm he's like, got that look to him, hasn't he? Yeah, like, the whole thing felt like, okay, now we're going to talk about hypnotism. <laughs> like, that's what it felt like. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, so there was no, again, there was no real new information. It showed some art from all these books, uh, heard from some of the writers, and he's all very excited and all the rest of it. Um, the, the one little tidbit, though, is that, remember how we would We'd been hearing before, oh, August is going to be a vertical relaunch. I don't know if the rest of them are coming in August, but the editor did say he's excited about all the other books they're working on at Vertical that they've not announced yet. So they're doing a lot more creator own style books at Vertical at some point. I'm, I'm so. all the way down for this because, you know, Vertigo has had some great stuff in the past. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a bit fumbling for, uh, you know, maybe a decade or so now. Yeah, yeah, they've just, just it's just kind of existed and like they've not really known what to do with it because kind of yeah. in the last decade or so, image has run to prominence really, and yeah. um, people have gone there instead of Vertigo. So uh, you know, maybe this is a way to say well, what what's its purpose, what's its relevance in today's yeah, publicity. what's what's its purpose, and maybe it's been like a decade of figuring out okay, what what can we make this to combat image or not combat, but at least work in a world where image is existing. You know what's yes. the, how, what's this place in the in the, the market space? You know, and they said a lot of things. Like Diddy and Jim Lee were talking a lot about why Zoom and Ink are important, why Black Label is important. It's like okay, appealing to young readers, appealing to people in bookshops, appealing, you know, uh, Black Labels. Oh, so, some of our bigger stories are just standalone things. Dark Knight Returns, Killing Joe, Watchmen. You, you go in, you buy the book, and you got the whole story, and it's finished. Um, and it was just you know, it was okay. So, so we're appealing to new readers. Uh, and it was funny because through all this, it was like, okay, we're doing all this, but we're getting to like mainline DC stuff at the end, right? And they kind of admitted when they got there at the end, which came after another section about Mad Magazine because DC published that, which I, I did not know, funnily enough. Oh, did you not? No. Uh, well, I've never even read Mad Magazine. Like, I'm, I, I've, I've heard I've of it. I've never read it. I, just, I, know, I know DC yeah. published it, though. I've heard of it. I, I am not familiar with it in any way. So that, this, this all was kind of just a bathroom break for me. Although, to be fair to them, the guy was quite funny, as was even even Diddy was cracking some good jokes uh, during this. So at least it was it was entertaining because they were kind of having fun with it. Yeah. Uh, but because he, he came out and he's like, okay, everyone, all the other lines have had video packages, so I've got a video to play as well. Is that okay? And they played this movie, this old black and white movie, this ridiculous little goofy monster B movie from like the fifties or something like that. And he turned, and the guy turned around and said, "Yeah, I, I wanted to get a shape of water, but you know, the, the, it would cost a lot of money, so they said you had to get like a public domain." Uh, thing instead, so that's what we've got. And then he was like, oh, so so is Shape of Water the themes of that? Or is that relative to what you're doing in Mad Magazine? And they said, no, I just like that movie. 
And that was generally pretty funny. I'm like, what was the point of that clip? And there was no point. <laughs> it was just... Well, the point was the joke. Yeah, so... Uh... I can appreciate that. Oh, it was a good little joke. It was a good little joke. Uh, so it was entertaining, but obviously that's not what we're here for. We're here for the, the mainline stuff. And oh, yeah. Scott Snyder came out and I was like, okay, so we're talking about uh, No Justice, what's coming out after No Justice. Uh, the editor, of course, was out before him uh, talking about, you know, just, you know, the what was the magazine called? They're doing the 25 cent thing. DC Nation. DC Nation, that's what it's called. Uh, it's like, oh, yeah, this is what's going to be in there and it's going to lead to these things and uh, there's a video package played, Tom King talked for a bit, Bendis talked for a bit, uh, the whole thing. But, you know, Bendis was talking about how we've got this new villain, it's going to rock Superman's world. It's all this typical buzz phrases we've heard before, but obviously, uh, you know, not Connor, but a lot of us are excited regardless because Bendis is Bendis. Mm-hmm. And he is coming. Indeed he is, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, we announced all the books that you'll be interested in, Carl. They did, they did. Didn't but before, they? before we get to those, though, we had some. I'm going to order my notes here. I was taking things down as I was going. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, so he was talking about how after No Justice, we're going into sort of a kind of a branding for the Justice League books. Not the DC as a whole. It's not. It's not like a new rebirth branding or anything like that. But they're calling the Justice League books after No Justice. They're calling it New Justice. Oh, okay. Oh, you didn't. You weren't here for this part. <laughs> no, I, I, I wasn't here until so, somewhere during Snyder's. Stuff. And New Justice is basically the Justice League books, the Titans books. Uh, it may also include the Hotman book, which kind of makes sense given that it's coming from Metal and spinning out. Of that. Yeah, I know Snyder mentions that. Yeah, so so it's called New Justice, and the first big thing he said that got the crowd cheering is that their base is going to be Hall of Justice. They're bringing that back. Which makes a lot of sense, I mean, because just, just, just not to spoil uh, this week's Justice League book, but the Watchtower's seen better days. <laughs> it's kind of out of commission. To, to be fair, that's not really spoiling this week's issue, given it's, where the last one left off. True, true, true. But it's definitely out of commission, though, based on this yeah, one. Is, is there a new logo for this new I, Justice thing, then? Uh, not as of yet, no. There was no... No, no, so, no so I don't think that will brand it. Yeah, I don't think they're going to brand the issues like they do Rebirth. I don't think they're going to do that. I think it's, it's just, just a, a, an official, like, okay, we're going to refer to them yeah, as this. It's, it's just a blanket a thing to say, yeah. oh, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about, uh, what what I'm essentially considering this as like phase two of Rebirth. Yeah. In some ways, you know, this is, it kind of feels like that. It's kind of 1.5, like it's not really phase two till the end of Doomsday, Doomsday Clock. Clock. Yeah, no. But well, I, I get what you mean. I wonder though if after Doomsday Clock it's going to be the next thing. Like it's not Rebirth anymore. It'll be you know Doomsday Clock ends and then whatever next starts. Uh, it could be. In this case, this is almost like the prelude to to whatever's next, rather than Phase Two of of Rebirth. Yeah. I, I, well, I wouldn't say prelude just because it feels more maybe not quite fifty fifty, but it does kind of feel like we're halfway. Because because Doomsday Clock's not going to finish there till summer. <laughs> That's, that is true. So, so we got another year of that yet. Yeah. So it feels less of a prelude and more just. The next half, <laughs> or third at least. Third, yeah. But regardless, uh, so so Hall of Justice, New Justice, and then he's like, okay, I'm not, I'm not supposed to tell you much, but yeah, the villains, the Legion of Doom, we're bringing the Legion of Doom back. He was all excited. Uh, crowd, of course, were cheering for that. He's like, I can't tell you who's in it yet, who's on the roster, but Legion of Doom are coming. Uh, and then another thing he was saying, and I can't remember everything he said. I think I didn't catch everything to note this down, but it just he wanted to like. St- explain just how crazy he's going with this just asleep book that page one has commandy the original monitor dc one million dc one million and then there was another couple of things that i'm, I'm blanking yeah. on and i was like how, how, this is a lot to fit on page one this is a lot to fit on page one uh so we know snyder's crazy that is not that is not news uh but this is this is all exciting stuff uh so it's all it, big. it, it does sound like a, a genuine successor to metal it, it does in a lot of ways. Because uh, he says at the end of No Justice, it kind of blows the, the universe open. Because uh, at one point, he kind of stops himself from saying something. He was saying something about exploring different worlds from like Brainiac, like, you know, had on his ship or something like that. And he, he kind of stopped himself. Oh, wait, that's too far. I can't talk about that. <laughs> right. Mm. So, but it sounds like new pockets of the universe are opening up, which leads to one of the books that were announced. But it seems to be that everything's blown up and uh, that's kind of where it's going. And it's it, what it does sound like, though, before we get to what these other books are by the other people, it does sound like uh, they're all working together as a family of books. And it wouldn't surprise me, much like how there was a two-year rebirth plan, it wouldn't surprise me if there's some sort of rough two-year, these are what the three Justice League books are going to do over the next, or even the, the three Justice League books and the two Titan books over the next couple of years, and are going to feed into each other and do things. Because he mentioned that you'll see the other teams pop into the main book, and you'll see... Yeah, so it, he, he makes a point of saying, because the Hall of Justice is the hub base, Yeah, and they'll have the teleporters, 
to get to their own individual bases. Yeah. So I, I, they'll I th- all be in and out of the Hall of Justice. Although it sounds like the main Justice League and the main Titans team are both going to be using that as a base, and then the other sort of teams will be... Okay, de- definitely the main Justice League. I didn't catch the bit about the Titans, but I'll tell you what on that one. No, it sounded like they were based on there as well, uh, at least from what okay. you said. Uh, so... So that's coming. He did. He did kind of say something weird. I didn't quite know how to take this exactly. He mentioned something about Tinian uh, helping out with the Legion of Doom, and it didn't sound like there's going to be a Legion of Doom book. I'm wondering if there's going to be backups about the Legion of Doom characters, maybe, and Tinian's going to write those or something. Because he mentioned something about Tinian helping with that. I don't know if he just means it'll be in the Tinian book that they'll be fleshing those out, but that doesn't this will sound right. It was. It was kind of vague the way he said it. But, yeah, it, it might not even be as much of a writer credit as we're thinking. It might not, obviously we yeah. know they're very close. It might be just he's given him a lot of ideas and he's talked to him a lot about it. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, but it, well, yeah, I wasn't really clear what he said. It, it, it definitely doesn't sound like it was going to be a Legion of Doom book because I think they'd have said that. It, it oh, they would have heard. Yeah, he wouldn't have phrased it like that, and then and that would turn out to be a book. It would. It's either it's something else. But regardless, mm. he mentioned Great. that there'll be some fleshing out of Legion of Doom. So anyway, the new books, the two books that it's funny because I, I I went into this thinking okay. There's going to be at least these two books announced. Probably more. There wasn't more, <laughs> but we did get these. A lot of other little tidbits, though. There was a, just other, gone yeah, other tidbits, but these were the only two official books announced with teams. Here's what they are. Um, so the first one, uh, James Titan the Fourth and Alvaro Martinez, who has been one of the main artists on Detective Comics, so that's a nice pairing to, to keep together. Uh, arguably one of the better artists on uh, Detective as well. Uh, I'll agree with that. Not, so, the, not the best, but one of the better ones. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, who, who is the best then? Who, who's the name you're thinking oh, of? Uh, oh god, I'm, I'm blanking on his name now. It's uh, the guy to the very first arc. It's been back a few times. Wasn't that Martinez? No, I don't think it was. Someone okay. else. I'll take a word for it. I, I can't remember. Uh, but so they're the team on this, and this is Justice League Dark with the following lineup. The leader of the team is Wonder Woman. Then you have Swamp Thing, Zatanna, with a beard. <laughs> Swamp Thing with a beard, Zatanna, Man Bat, and Detective Chimp. With a sword. With a sword. That is the team of Just Lead Dark. Honestly, making a Just Lead Dark team that doesn't have Constantine in it is like, is like just... No, no, I, they, I think Constantine isn't. That, he's not on this cover. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm getting to that. Stop jumping ahead. Right, I, I know where I'm going with this. Right, but it's just, on surface level... Then making a Just League Dark book that doesn't have Constantine there, it's like made for me. Yes, thank you. I'll take it. Um, yes, they, they did say, uh, uh, Tyrion on Twitter did say that Constantine will be in the book. In fact, he said that almost every magical DC character you can think of will be in the book as long as he was given permission to use them. Uh, and Constantine will be in there in some capacity. Uh, whether that means that he's not on the team, but he's kind of there as a sort of other role or yeah, I know, else. Uh, even on stage, Snyder mentioned Constantine when he was when he was going through them yeah uh but he's not on the team at least to begin with seemingly based on yeah. this uh, first issue cover um, and we got a little bit about the premise go on uh so they told us that something that happens at the end of metal that screws up all of magic whatever happens magic's kind of gone or it's not usable or it's just in a weird place and they're kind of looking into it and trying to sort it out essentially mm-hmm. it's kind of what it sounds like and i am completely down for this I, I am down. I like I like the team that are on it. I like the team that of characters that are in it. Uh, Wonder Woman finally but on this makes a lot of sense given her origins. And yeah, and it, it seems to follow up from the the team wisdom yeah. thing of, of no justice. Uh, obviously, Detective Chimp's always nice to see. It's nice to see, see he's getting a bit more play. And of course, the out there, much like with Detective, where you had Clayface as being this out there addition, we have Man Bat as an out there addition, which is kind of cool. So I'm I'm yeah. curious to see. Well, that goes with uh, Kirk Langstrom. Uh, and uh, the, uh, I am intrigued to see how much they play with Kirk Langstrom as well as just the man bat. Oh, I think they will. I, I think they'll absolutely be playing with that. I, 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 if anything, I think it'll probably be similar to Clayface and we'll, we'll probably grow to really like uh, Kirk. Probably. I just think it's because Kirk's a very... He's a, he's a scientist. You know, he's very much in the not the, the magic realm of things. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's why he's there. They wanted a scientist. Yeah, it could be. Uh, so and then the other book, of course, this was the one that was harder to predict because uh, I think Dark was an obvious prediction a lot of people were making just because okay, yeah, if there's going to be three Justice League books, weeks, yeah. yeah, if there's going to be three Justice League books, one of them's probably going to be a Dark book because why not? Uh, but what would the other one be? 
And it turns out we're getting a Space Justice League book called Justice League Odyssey. Uh, this is the Joshua Williamson book with uh, Sergic on art, which of course is very exciting. Oh yeah. And here's the team for this book, the, 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 the roster. Uh, so the leader's going to be Cyborg. So first things first, before we get to the rest of the team. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I do think that means he's probably going to not be on the main team as much. Because as much as Wonder Woman's going to be the leader of the, the Dark Team, she's still on Earth, seemingly. So, See, this is where I, I dis- disagree. Okay. I think they made a whole big speech about the teleporters. They'll be in and out because it will apply to this as well. I don't know because they specifically mention how they're getting around in space. They do, but, you know, they, they, they can have a teleport on that. I think between Cyborg not being on the issue to cover and then him being the leader of this other team that are seemingly all kind of out there, because I think it's worth mentioning that every single other person on this team is not in any other teams. Everyone else on this team is away from... It, it's true. I, I will say, if Aquaman had also not been on the cover of issue two of Justice League, I would agree with that logic. You mean had because not I... been... Yeah, yeah, but because Aquaman was missing as well, I kind of feel like you're just reaching because you're hoping Cyborg's not on it. I'm not hoping. I, I just I feel like having him here as the leader is kind of them. Um, okay, let's give him a more prominent role elsewhere rather than being lost in the shuffle with the the A-listers. But uh, um, but regard I, I, either way, what it's not it doesn't really matter. But uh, so Cyborg's the leader. Uh, then you have Starfire. You have Jessica Cruz, who I'm very happy about because I was worried that she was missing from the with a, uh, with a spear and shield on this cover. Yeah, she was missing from the main team, and I was worried that she wasn't going to be on any teams. So I'm very glad about that. And then you've got Asriel, who's a bit of a, a left field choice, but not as left field <laughs> as the final member, <laughs> who is Darkseid, who Snyder said was kind of a Hannibal Lecter esque role because the dark things that seem to be coming from the universe are so bad that you need to consult with Darkseid. Yeah, and this has to do with his father. Yeah, so we got Darkseid in the team. I think it actually makes a lot of sense for Cyborg to be with a, a dark side, or at least a new god, given that his origin since New 52 has been, oh, mother box and, you know, uh, apocalypse yep. tech. No, I agreed. So that makes some sense. Uh, the thought of any of them trying to give him an order is kind of amusing to me. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. We'll see mm. what they do with it. Uh, but it's interesting. It's very interesting. So... Those are the two books. We got Justice League Dark with Wonder Woman, Swamp Thing, Man Bat, Zatanna, and Detective Jim. We got Justice League Odyssey with Cyborg, Starfire, Jessica Cruz, Azrael, and Darkseid. Uh, this is uh, exciting stuff. It's very exciting. I, uh, I'm just uh, skimming an article that's summarizing some of this stuff because obviously I came in a bit late. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, this article mentions that Tinian will be co writing some issues of Justice League that will weave the ah, Legion of Doom into the story. Okay, that makes some sense. Uh, so basically what that is then is Snyder's admitting that Tinian's a bigger nerd for the villains, so he's bringing him in to help. Pretty much. Uh, either that or he's busy doing uh, his Black Label book and wants to make it a bit easier on himself. So hey, come in and help me write the Justice League book for a few issues. Uh, it's not the first time they've co-written things, so oh, it's not, probably absolutely. won't be the last. So uh, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, both of them sound really intriguing. I think Dark has maybe the overall better lineup of characters, because uh, when I look at Odyssey, it's, it's, it's Cruise and Starfire I'm most excited about, and very intrigued by Darkseid. Yeah, yeah. But um, that said, the concept of Odyssey is more exciting to me, because they mentioned that they are travelling through space on one of Brainiac's old ships, and it's got flames painted on it. Yeah, yeah. Snyder joked that they wanted to call it uh, Justice League WTF, uh-huh, uh-huh. and, and you know, make the WTF stand for something else, but... He's kind of right, because that's immediately, when I see this, I'm going, what the hell is this book? Uh, so that is, it's like, I feel like Dark is the dependable one that I can kind of, all right, I can kind of see how that'll be, especially since Tiny's just done a team book, I can kind of see how, what the, the roles they'll all fill. Odyssey's like, oh man, this sounds insane, and uh, Sajik drawing uh, crews is all, all I need <laughs> to, to be yeah. on board. But I, I really like the premise, the premise sounds really cool. Uh and so, breaking out from that, he, d- he did say, like, Metal's kind of infecting a few other books when it ends. He did mention the Bensons on Green Arrow. Now, they are doing a fill-in issue, which may be all he means. It may just be that one issue. But I just, I noted it down, just in case it means maybe they'll end up be backing on the book later. Yeah, I, I took that to be their fill-in story, because of when it is. And I think it probably is. it even mentioned something to do with Metal yeah, in that. It probably is. I just, I noted it down, just in case... Yeah, because he was letting things slip left and right that he wasn't supposed to. <laughs> I actually wonder how much of this we weren't supposed to know. 
Yeah, I don't know. I feel like it was all... It, it makes him come across as the good guy, giving us all this extra information. Mm. But I'm sure it was all pre-approved. I'm just I'm I'm looking at all the stuff we've got. And I'm just thinking. I bet there was one thing he wasn't supposed to say. <laughs> I bet <laughs> maybe one thing, but I think most of it. Because at one point, did you did actually jump in and stop him from talking? <laughs> he did. He did. And he also stopped himself at one point as well. So, uh, you know, it's worth mentioning. Even if everything we got mainly was pre-approved, he was he was almost crossing some lines at some point. Uh, but hey, so. So here's the next thing. So this was the stuff that I left out of the solicits because we kind of saw hints of this in the solicits with uh, Teen Titans specials, which seem to be kind of one-off bigger issues that are setting up the next phase of the Teen Titan books. Uh, much to my surprise, it is actually seemingly sticking around in a similar fashion in the sense that we have a Teen Titans book and a Titans book still. It seems like Teen Titans has continued its numbering because uh, some of the, the post stuff that wasn't mentioned in the, the panel itself, but the new run in t- Teen Titans is starting with issue 20. So we're getting the special in issue 20. So that is continuing oh. its numbering. Um, and Adam Glass, who is doing the special in June, is the one on the new, who's the new narrator on the team. Bernard Chang is the the artist, um, and basically Damien goes off and reforms a new team. Uh, and we know from the cover that Emmy Red Arrow, which is cool, and New Wally are in that team. Uh, so we don't know who else is going to be on the team as of yet, but they're, they're, he's forming a new team. So exciting yeah. stuff. He made a point of saying they were being very you know, more more rebellious than usual. Mm. They're like, oh, we're not working with the adults. We're going off and doing our own thing. And you know, the three characters that we've got so far, okay, I can see it. They drive with that, yeah. New Wally seems to conflict with Barry a lot, and then of course Emmy's Emmy and Damien. She's Damien. Rebellion One Hundred and One. Yeah, so that that's, that's pretty exciting stuff. I'd be curious to see who else ends up on that. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, Abnet is still on Titans, which I don't want to say is disappointing. It's kind of like it's just a non thing it's just like okay so he's still on it however the premise for titans and the team that's on titans as in the the characters is actually very interesting because what we have here the snyder described this new titans or not maybe not a new book but the continuation of titans post no justice as the triple a team that is basically training to be the justice league when the other characters step down uh they're going to be in the hall of justice it mentioned that there's going to be co-leaders of nightwing and raven which is really cool, because oh, Nightwing makes a lot of sense, obviously, but Raven makes a lot of sense as well, given her history with New Teen Titans. She's been there for a long goddamn time. It makes yes. sense, more sense for her to be with the grown-ups than being with the younger kids. Same with Starfire, who obviously is going off in a Justice League team, so she's also... She's, she's promoted. She's finally matured. Yeah, she's promoted. Uh, so, that's pretty cool. Uh, they also mentioned on the team is Beast Boy, Steel, and Miss Martian. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Steel's the only weird choice for me. Um, like kind of sticks out as uh, I don't associate Steel with the the other characters in the same way. Nor do I. Nor do I. I wonder if that's like uh, this is the older team and we need a Superman representative and he kind of fits that bill. Yeah, could be. Could be. Uh, I mean, I mean, you could have put Supergirl, but Supergirl is not a classic Teen Titans character either. But I mean, I guess now is he, so whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. But I think that's probably because Supergirl is tied into the Bend of Superman saga that's going to be going. Um, probably. I think what's interesting to me about this is like you know Wally's not there seemingly given what they've said and I'm like that kind of makes sense because it seems like Wally's becoming a bigger part of the Flash run. It seems like it does, he's yeah. he's going to if not be co leader that book he's at least going to be you know a prominent secondary character in that book. So you're getting your Wally fix from yeah arguably somewhere better. Do you know what I'm going to say actually about that? I honestly think it's somewhere. I mean, I argue maybe it is somewhere better, but I don't, I don't think it's because Titans was necessarily a bad place for it. I actually think Titans has mostly been hampered by the fact that he wasn't allowed to do anything, really. Yeah. I, I think uh, it was a case it's of... It's kind of been a, a non-book, hasn't it? it? It's been a spin the wheels for a couple of years, because we're saving Wally for later down the line in Flash, and because of that, it just kind of felt like, okay, just have them do stuff. And that could have still been fun. I mean, I, I can blame T- uh, Abnet a bit for just not having fun standalone stories. Like, they, they weren't as good as they could have been. But I think, because Abnet can be great, especially, he can. When he, especially when he's got a good artist. Uh, so, I do like the new direction for it, even even if you know. Yeah, I'll be jumping back on the new direction for sure. I'll yeah. jump on the probably with the special. Yeah, the special setting up the new direction, so that makes a yeah. lot of sense. That's kind of the. But the... Uh, it's in, again, it's much like Teen Titans. I assume this is just keeping its numbering. It sounds they don't like specify, but I think that's the purpose of the special. Is that that's the number one, and then yeah. go back to numbering. <laughs> 
Yeah, but to be fair, I kind of like that better than renumbering. That's actually it works. I do as well, uh, especially this one where it's it's the same writer. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so no, that's interesting. Obviously, Percy's off Teen Titans, uh, but that makes sense because we know he's on uh, Nightwing. Uh, he may end up popping up in another book because now he's only on one issue a month. Uh, so, yeah, but, it could be, depends what else he's busy with. Yeah, I mean, he, he writes novels and stuff too, so maybe he's focused on that more this year and next year, or maybe he's got something else in the pipeline. Because you know, before uh, yeah. before he was doing three issues a month between two books, so we'll see if he it's ends true. up with I, a second I, issue. I do believe one of his books is getting done for TV, so maybe he's busy with that. Yeah, uh, that's entirely possible. But that, that could just be like a delay thing. It could be like, oh, he'll be doing yeah. just Nightwing for six months and then... Yeah, it could well be. They'll announce a single issue, you know, a month of something else that he'll be working on. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, we know where he is. He's on Nightwing. Uh, where we don't know as of yet is where uh, Tamasi is going to end up. Obviously, the running uh, thinking, uh, the rumours, is that he's on Detective, uh, which actually reminds me. At one point, Snyder brought up uh, Brian Hill, who's doing. He's like, oh, he, he, you know, all this stuff spent and no justice, including what Brian Hill's going to do. I can't talk about that yet, though. But pay attention to what he's doing in Detective Comics. And I'm like, yeah, it's an Outsiders book. Yeah, we all know it. You yeah. might as well just tell us. Just, just it's, see it. It's <laughs> worst kept secret in comics. It's called On the Outside, Black Lightning's training people. So, at least as of right now, I'm saying this is an Outsiders book with Black Lightning as leader, with Cassandra Kane and uh, Duke, at least, on the team. I'm hoping that we end up with Steph and maybe someone else on the team. I, I want Steph to show up somewhere. That's all, my only concern. Maybe. Right I don't know if I want Steph on that team as well, though. I don't want it to all be just that characters. Well, no, they are, but I feel mean saying take away Duke so I can have Steph, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, I would rather have Steph in that team, regardless of oh, it's half mostly back characters. I'd rather take that over not having her. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. Steph's more important than Tim. Tim can go wherever, no, but no, right, right, Steph right. and Cass need to be somewhere. <laughs> I'm sorry, I like them more than Tim. What do you want from me? <laughs> I want an apology for that bullshit that just came out of your mouth. I want that. <laughs> In terms of the 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 the, the Bat family, you get, uh, and this is not actually my ranking of who I care about. This is or how much I like them. This is just my ranking of who I need to be on a book of some kind, whether it's solo or on a team. So I'm getting my fix. You got Dick. You get Babs. You get Steph. You get Cass. You get Damien, and then Tim's somewhere after that. T- Tim's second for me after Dick. <laughs> It's fine. It's okay to be wrong. It's fine. Oh, oh I'm gonna punch you one day. It's so hard. Right, that smug face. So that, that was uh, all the stuff I noted down. I don't know if you've got any other tidbits you want to mention. I, I do have one. I've got a bit of theorizing I want to do. But if you get any other news you want, to... I, I I do. Just one thing. He talked about uh, the the Hawkman book from Vendetti. Ah yeah, he, he was revving up that and saying, "Oh, that's going to do a big thing." Because what he did say, I'm glad you brought this up actually. Cause yeah, that's so I thought important. it was very interesting. Uh, it's, it's, it sounds like he's going to basically take both classic versions, which is you know Thanagar, Alien Hawkman, and resurrecting Hawkman through time yeah, from Egypt. and Carter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Guitar and car. Uh, which I love how the other one's just the same name, but they just took out a letter and put a. Yeah, Car, car Hall, Guitar Hall. Yeah. Just, just come on. Uh, so, but basically, it's going to merge the two of them and tell us epic story of the greatest explorer ever. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of down. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Vendetti doesn't excite me, Hitch doesn't excite me, but I would. I'm also going to try it. I do like. I, I want to like Hawkman. I want Hawkman to be good. So. Yeah, Venditti's earned some goodwill back with me recently with you know what he's been doing with Hall and Pals. It's been pretty solid for the most part. Uh, but it's actually something else we should talk about. Did, did you not talk about this last week? No, we did. No, we talked about him leaving the book, but I mean, just in light of all this news, in light of Jessica being on one of these Justice League teams, I wonder if there's a proper big shake-up going to be happening with the Lantern books. Now, admittedly, Seeley's not been on the Lanterns that long, and it feels like he's got a long run on him, so maybe not, but... I'm thinking with Jessica, does that become just a Baz book with Jessica off in space all the time? Not that it has to. I mean, obviously, we, we murky this up with comics all the time with, you know, yeah. uh, Canaries and Green Arrow every week, but she's also in uh, Birds of Prey Birds all the time. Prey, yeah. So, you know, whatever. I, but, I think, you know, I think that's an interesting thing you just mentioned, though, because this will be the first time since her introduction in, in mm. John's Justice League that she'll be on her own, right, without, without Baz. Uh, that is true, yeah. I mean, because it, it's been so. Like, I mean, she was introduced for a couple of arcs at the end of that, but I don't think we really got to know her as a character till Green Lanterns. Oh, of course, yeah. 
Uh, so it's going to be weird separating her because you kind of uh, associate them but as a pair now. I'm just thinking of that, and then obviously Vendetti's leaving Green Lantern core. I just wonder if, like, oh, is there going to be a little shake up as to, like, you know, does, does Hal, Hal and Pals end essentially and we get that replaced with just a Green Lantern core book? Uh, as Green Lanterns keep going, I think Green Lanterns probably will, but I'm just wondering if there's more of a shake up coming because of yeah, maybe. these I'm, things. I'm, I am intrigued to see what, what we do with that because it's not too long. We know, we know he's yeah. doing. Uh, a three-part final story. Maybe once we know where yeah. what that is, because we haven't got the solicit for even the first part of that yet. I don't think. I think that'll be next month. Uh, what is? Yeah, because it, 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 it should be wrapping up in what, like August, September. It'll be his fiftieth yeah. issue, or issue fifty, which is the last one. Uh, what? Actually, that reminds me. Uh, Tenny and did confirm. Actually, no, it wasn't Tenny. It was, it was Martinez. But either way, someone who was working on the book, but it was Martinez on Twitter did confirm that. Uh, that Dark is starting in July. So I assume Odyssey is as well, probably. But Dark is for sure. Yeah. So uh, so that's worth mentioning. Uh, so, no, I just wonder if there could be a shake-up with the Green Lantern books. Uh, I do like there's a Green Lantern on the Space Justice League team. That makes a hell of a lot of sense. And it does. I'd be shocked if not. And obviously being Jessica I like, because she's my favourite Lantern. So, you know, let her shine. Um, and I'll be curious to see what the what's replacing Vindetti's yeah. Green Lantern book. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll, just, I'll just say that'll end mid, mid-August. Mid-August. So. So whether it just keeps the name and changes the number, although I do think it should just change to Green Lantern Core. I feel like it, putting Hal's name first as if he's more important just feels kind of weird <sighs> to me. It, it, it kind of made sense at the start of this run when Hal was the, the focus. Yeah. But as the run's gone on, it's shifted away from that. Hal's still obviously around, but it's more just this is the Earth Lanterns as and, well. And honestly, than... it, it, it's a good excuse for them to launch it issue one because I actually do want them to rename it, so... No, no, that's fair. I mean, I, I'm intrigued because, like I said, we, we, so his final three-part story, we'll get the first two parts of that in next month's solicits. Cool, all right. So maybe we'll have a firmer direction of, you know, okay, where's this going? So, yeah, so so that's that's interesting. And the thing I wanted to theorize a little bit, uh, this is just a bit of speculation on my part, but like I said, so it seems like these Just Sleep books have like a plan for at least a year, if not two, right? Just the way they've been talking, they've been going to these summits, they've been planning things out together, they're all excited about it. And the way Snyder talked about titans and talked about how oh, the other the other justice league and training team right I, do you think we're going to get that story at some point in this kind of like run of these books and not not permanently i i don't think for a second that we're going to lose the justice league characters permanently as a team just that do you think there'll be an arc in this like sort of year to year plan where for whatever reason the main team are missing the book will still be there the book they'll probably you know in space somewhere or something but the Titan team will actually have to step up and technically be the Justice League while they're gone. I assume so. I assume yeah. that we'll get the Justice League, the, the Justice League proper, will have to go off to space or something to deal with whatever. Yeah, Thanos is... And it, not Thanos, sorry, Darkseid's dad. That was a slip. <laughs> right, right. You know, they have to go off and do something, the main team. And they're like, okay, right, you, you, it's your time to shine. You know, you, you've got yeah. Earth while we're gone. And obviously, something's going to happen because some someone will go. Oh, Earth's undefended. They're gone. Let's let's strike now. Yeah, yeah, I could see that being a thing, uh, and that's when they rise up and Dick gets his his shining moment as leader of the Justice League. Right, exactly. I, I can see that. I would enjoy that dearly. It's a fun Probably idea. Probably in about a year, year and a half's time. Yeah, because uh, because again, why I'm optimistic about this this new Titans direction is again, Amna is good when he's when he's got like things i think what's interesting about abnet is that when he has a good concept he tends to do pretty well with it but when he has to kill time it's usually pretty mind-numbing uh and i feel like this all feels like it's very it's got a direction it's not this does not sound directionless to me oh, i agree i think the the clearest example is his aquaman run so the first chunk of that is like okay we're kind of just treading water no, no pun intended <laughs> Yeah, hit and miss. Then, it picked up because obviously issue twenty five where it really got good, but I think the arc before that was also pretty good for me. Right, right, but that's because like, yeah. he had a story for that arc. Whereas you know a lot of them were just like, okay, well here's some political climate stuff, here's some setup, you know, here's what's going on. Yeah. Once we got into Atlantis, it was clear that this is the story he was building to. Once we actually got into Atlantis and doing that stuff, it's like okay, he has a story now. Yeah, because I think we even theorized at the time like. Did he just have? Was he like spreading the story he had for one issue a month over two issues, and that's why it feels like it's moving so slowly? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's just one theory. Maybe, maybe that's wrong. But uh, so no, and uh, interesting big news. I'm, uh, you know, I'm 
cautiously curious and optimistic about the Titan books. Cause, I mean, I don't know if Adam Glass is any good. Like, I mean, it's, uh, I I think I read his Suicide Squad stuff in the New Fifty Two. And <laughs> did you think I it was don't, good? I wasn't. Imp- I I don't recall being impressed. I think if I'm remembering right, he came on after Cop, so I was not particularly impressed. Well, that's unfortunate to hear. But apparently, this was his big pitch. Like he was, he was chomping at the bit to like pitch this Teen Titans book. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe he'll be better with some heroes than than villains. Huh? Uh, I think it's also worth mentioning. They mentioned he was a TV writer first, and I wonder if that was one of his first comic works. Maybe he's just gotten better since then. Uh, it could well be. It's it's. I know. I know. People obviously think they're a yeah. really similar medium, and you know, well, and it's easy funny, to jump between them. But Tamaki was joking about because she she had traditionally written like prose. And she said that her, her first comic script that she handed in, she, it was like it, someone looked at it and immediately said, "That's not a comic script." <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, no, so that was all the it big was, news. I, I, I recall it was uh, Supernatural that they said he'd worked on. Ah, okay. It was, it was his main TV show. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, but that was that was all the big news. Uh, so we got these two books probably both launching in July. At least one of them are for sure. But I'm hoping they both are. I Makes would sense. assume so. So we got these books coming in July, uh, and maybe we'll find out uh, in a couple of months if we're getting new stuff in August and September as well. Because I'm, I'm kind of it's, at least if nothing else, whatever's going on from Green Lanterns and a new writer on Green Arrow and stuff like that. If there's no new actual book books, yeah, because Green Green Arrow will be September now, right? Yes, and then oh wait, no, uh, no, no, June, July, it'll be August. August, right? Yeah. So and and Green Lantern. Core is going to be August, so maybe that we'll get another big thing you know, that will give us some insight to those you know, in, a, in a couple of months. Yeah, sometime before the solicits for August, basically, <laughs> which mm. will be two months away. So uh, there you go. That, that is all the news, which means we can finally get on to the books, which by comparison feel much less exciting because all the news was super big this week, but... Uh, Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, not not a standout week for books either. Like, there's no huge big thing. It's like, oh, this is the one. Yeah, Joe. You know, you know it's funny because week one felt the same way, and I think it's it's nice that we're getting these shakeups coming because I think week one and three are suffering a little bit from feeling a little bit in the because week two typically has Mister Miracle, which is the really exciting thing in week two right now. Plus, it has new Superman for me and Matt that we're super pumped about, uh, and. You know, detective and the rest of it, and then week four has been the the doomsday clock week. Admittedly, every other month now, uh, but anyway, it's had like Batgirl, which we've all really been enjoying. And it's uh, you know, t- yeah. uh, I feel like week one and three are very dependable and typically solid. Although week one this month was a little bit weaker across the board. It was a board. bit rough, wasn't it? But uh, like I say, generally speaking, like this, there's nothing this week that you know I'm not going. Oh, this is a really bad week. It's just oh, a yeah. very average week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. I Kind of concur with that. But that's it. There's some solid stuff in here. So we'll obviously we'll start with Batman number 43, uh, Tom King and Mikhail Jannin uh, on this book. Uh, and what's interesting about this is obviously we were kind of mixed on the last issue, which is partly yeah. why week one was kind of disappointing this this uh, month for on the whole. Um, and what's funny is I stuck up for it a lot more and I said the one thing that really bothered me was when it felt like it was shoehorning in stuff about you know, because uh, Poison Ivy fans were pissed that she killed people in uh, war jokes and riddles, and then this, this issue was almost entirely about her killing people. In it's war it's jokes basically and riddles. become that's what this whole arc has been about. Is like, hey, Ivy, she's not a bad guy. Now, he, now here's the thing, right? We, I have no idea. I I can't say for sure one way or the other if this was what he always had planned, give or take. And it just feels like it's a reaction to you know the, the the backlash at the time, or if a lot of this was changed because of the backlash, I don't know. But it's impossible for me not to read this and be kind of like this feels like you're just kind of like making sure everyone's happy about what happens before. It does a bit, doesn't it? It does. And it, uh, it, like there are things I like in this issue probably more than I like the last issue in terms of I really like the the Harley and Ivy relationship I like the yeah I like the Harley Ivy I like the Catwoman uh, Ivy stuff I like um, yeah. I, I like when because the whole thing in the middle is that Catwoman knocks out Ivy for like 15 seconds so Batman has 14 seconds to snap Harley because the whole idea is that Harley being a close friend means that she's probably not as like deep like she's on the surface like she doesn't want to like, take Harley away as much as everyone else so he has 14 seconds to wake her up and snap her out of it so Harley's Harley again and Catwoman has just more, just fifty one second more to wake Ivy up because if she doesn't, then planes will start falling out of the sky because she's controlling all the pilots. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So that was, that was that was fun thing, and then I was like, "Oh, that was impossible." And then she's like, "Not impossible, Batman." Uh, which I yeah, smiled I'm, at because I, I could almost hear Matt cringe. Uh, I'm 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 with him on that one. This is the worst <laughs> because Batman like King has committed yet. <laughs> this, this is literally uh, this impo- No, not impossible. Just Batman. That's fine. Go with it. Like no, piss off. He actually just said because Batman in the book. Well, yeah, but the thing he did wasn't actually that impossible. It's not, but I just don't like the, the him say, it's 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 more grating because he's actually saying it. Like, don't say because Batman. Like, just it, it, right if it happens, fine, whatever. I don't like it. Yeah, but, but Selena's in love with them, and she's saying because Batman because she feels that way. I don't know. I really don't like it. <laughs> that doesn't bother really me. Don't. If anything, I just smiled because I knew it the night, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can feel Matt's rage. Yeah, you, I can you feel think it. I'm annoyed at it? Yeah, that's nothing. I could feel it. Uh, and the funny thing is, is I actually, it's kind of funny because I, I, I do, in one hand, I feel like there's a lot, like, Catwoman's always been kind of on the line, right? But I feel like Harley and Ivy, because people like them so much, they kind of had to turn them into anti-heroes. They weren't allowed to just be evil and be villainous. And yeah. Ivy, probably second, I think Harley went through that first, where over the course of time, like, people loved her so much that they just, oh no, she's, she's a bit of an anti-hero now because... People so like her so much. It kind of happened around the same time with the the Gotham yeah. City Sirens book. Uh, and you know, people like you know on Twitter were like, giving King so much shit for making Ivy villainous, and I'm like, but she's a villain. She was always a villain. And I get that people like her a lot, but uh, those villains. I, I love the Joker. I, I don't need him to be sympathetic. I love Joker being evil I, as shit. <laughs> I, I like Ivy as evil. It, she's a villain, but she's a sympathetic villain because she's very much sure, like, yeah. okay, no, she cares about the plants. She cares about the earth. There's there's a Okay, I get it. I understand her mother. She hates people. Yeah. She likes a couple of them, like Harley I just, like, and, and I actually, her, but... I actually like how it's handled here in the sense that I like the part where Batman actually kind of like... I mean, I don't necessarily like the retcon that they force him where he's like, oh, you didn't kill those guys. What are you talking about? Riddler did that. And he yeah. lets it off the... I didn't like that part. But I did like the part where he says, maybe the reason why you're struggling with this so much is because you just aren't a villain. You're just not that awful a person. I kind of like that the way that was kind of written. On its own. No, I, I do. Like, like I said, I think she works as a villain, but I think it's because she sees herself as a villain because she's like, oh, I have to be a villain to achieve my goals of saving the earth. Mm. It's not like she's not going for world domination, right? I, you know. And that's why I'm kind of conflicted, is because I actually I, I I like how it's handled for the most part uh, with like Batman's little speech to her, uh, but I. I at the same time, I think we're on a really weird slippery slope where as soon as any villains become likable by a lot of people, oh, we have we can't have them be villains anymore. And I feel like that's a really weird slope to be on. Like, uh, you yeah. know, who's next? Like, you know, if, if Cheetah gets a fan base, do, do, oh, we can't have her be villainous now because people like her. So we have to no, turn Alex Cheetah into a hero. No, I've out with Cheetah because they kind of you know, did it with, in Rooker's run. With, you know, with the okay, she's a bad example. Side. She's a bad example because she's kind of got that Two Face thing where she yeah, is good as well. Kinda, but... And you can kind of do it with Two Face as well. Like you can you can play yeah. that line with him. Yeah, but you know, but there's a lot of people. The reason why I used a, a female villain is because a lot of people were, you know, the the people who were going nuts about this were calling them sexist and stuff on Twitter, and it was just like really, really, let's not. No, it's just a villain. It's not sexist if it's just a villain using a villain. I mean, it'd be like, okay, so here's a good example: Playface. We've just gone yeah. through forty odd issues or whatever it is yeah, with yeah. him as a semi-hero learning to be better. If in a few years he is doing something villainous again, I'm not gonna complain. It's it'll be disappointing, sure. But yeah, I get it. He's a villain. If someone wants to use him as a villain in in future, I'm kind of just gonna go with it because that's comics, right? I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but is there is there been like an arc for Ivy like Clayface has had in Detective where she has like definitively kind of had this this journey? Not to being a proper hero in the same way Clayface has. She's definitely yeah. mellowed. Like but, because that that was the thing for me. I was like, when did this change happen where everyone all of a sudden is in an uproar because she's acting like a villain i think it's the gotham city sirens book it may be i I don't know Uh, Uh, i think there was a large part of it there and when she's popped up in the harley book uh over the last couple of years she's been very you know sympathetic there as well when the reaction happened i genuinely went what's the hubbub about she's ivy she's a villain yeah yeah. Uh, Uh, no there was a period of time where she wasn't she was actively not being villainous and getting a regular job and but that was the other thing though even if she's turned into that more over time I'm like, well, this was set back at the early days of Batman, where she would have been a, would have been more villainous. So yeah. I, I can buy that she's gotten better since then. And I think a story of redemption is actually more interesting than saying, oh no, uh, you never actually did kill them. I, I agree. This is it. Kind of feels cheap, doesn't it? 
That, that does feel cheap. I will correct. Obviously, the art's fantastic throughout, as per usual with Jannin. Yeah, yeah. His his Harley is is very much Margot Robbie. I don't know if you caught that. It is kind of. Joe, Joe really bugged me about what. This is, and this is not an actual complaint, right? This is just like a weird thing for me that took me out of it. In one of her pages, when she's still in the, the room with Batman in the hospital, her speech bubble above her looked like Mickey Mouse, and it was bugging the shit out of me. Oh, I need to go find this now. It was just, it was just, it was two little bubbles with a bigger bubble, and it just looked like Mickey Mouse, and I was like, this is distracting. All I can think of is Mickey Mouse now. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> it was just so weird, and I don't know if that's intentional, if it's got some sort of weird subliminal thing going, but I, I don't think it is. I think you just noticed it, and, and that's it. But it is there, right? I'm not, I'm not. You no, know, it is. It's, it's. <laughs> And once I'm looking for it, I can see it instantly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. No, I mean, obviously Harley's expressions look great. I, I, I liked her little joke about... Uh, you know, King's... As much as you're, joke, you're, you're complaining about his Because Batman thing, he's also very good at making fun of Batman. Uh, you know, he's, he's not against having other characters pointing out how stupid he is. Because Harley's whole thing, like, he has a machine in his car that puts on his pants. Batman's crazy. And I know crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. There's always some fun stuff. It's true. I'm, I'm, I'm really murky on this because, like I said, there are things that I like, but overall, it kind of just feels like, what was the point of this story? Like, uh, other than to appease people. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I don't hate the arc. I think there's been some fun stuff. I, I like the mystery of the first issue. I like the banter a lot from the last one. I like some of the dramatic points made here, but as it went on, it's definitely gotten murkier and murkier. Uh, I did like the small touch that now he has, like, three Superman esque characters all following Batman, or she has these Superman characters all following Batman. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, it was it was fun seeing uh, you know Keenan and Kara be there as well, and like okay, right, so three supers. That's what it takes to take Batman yeah. down. I, I will say that's probably one of the only points of art I'll criticize is when the three of them show up outside the car. Mm. Keenan looks strange. He's got huge, huge shoulders and chest, and 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 a, a small head proportionally. Fair. I'm I'm going to find that page just for that, but yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. Uh, small criticism here. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of them here or there, but overall, it's pretty great. Like, there's the the panel where it's not the panel, the page where it's like a ton of panels. You know, like it's got loads of the small ones. Uh, you know, going between Ivy, Harley, uh, Superman, Bruce, S- Selina. Uh, I think Keenan's on there, and it's all on this one page of this sequential bit. It's uh, when he's in the hospital still, and it's mm. fantastic. I will say I am really excited. I, I got really excited about the the next time like the wedding begins, and I'm I'm ac- I'm actually really excited for all the sitcom esque stuff of like finding a dress, getting a best man, and all the yeah, other stuff. Yeah, no, that that stuff's gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to. All I know that. Um, King was saying I think in in forty five, uh, all the Robins are around. Ah, okay. All, all of them. Well, they're the ushers, right? That's obvious. Yeah, and and. Uh, we're assuming Clark's best man, right? It's either Clark or Dick. It's it's probably Clark. It, I could see the argument for Dick though. Clark. I could see it. That was that was honestly that was one that crossed my mind very early. But I was like, you know, he's he's too much the son. I think you go to the the best friend. The yeah, best Clark man. Clark's the the has peer in terms of his age range. Yeah. And then yeah, okay. Then you have. Uh, so we're we going to actually have like this is the weird thing though. If to get married, surely everyone at the wedding has to know their secret identities. If I mean, because because if Harley and Ivy are going to be there for Catwoman, <laughs> I mean they can get married in costume. It's a superhero wedding. Well, I've seen the cover. We know he's got a proper suit. <laughs> but just because there's a cover doesn't mean that's how it happens. In okay, fact, sure. I I distinctly in the panel today they showed some images of you know them in their wedding outfits and then in the mirrors they were in their superhero outfits. So yeah, that's true. That's the covers I'm talking about. We saw them yeah. last week or whatever. Right. Uh, but hey, uh, so I'm looking forward to all that stuff. So th- this was kind of a murky arc in the end. Even though I was sticking up for it more th- last issue. Um, the f- the final of it like. It was just kind of really forced. And, and, it, and it was all real. Like, there was no dream thing going on. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, everything was just flat out true. And it, it kind of glossed over at the end as well. Just, okay, Ivy's fixed now. And like, it's like it, no, Nothing happened, ba- basically. Batman and Cat were around bed. So, oh, yeah, that's all sorted. Uh, I, we should mention, actually, the Name Drop Sanctuary, which is the book that King's going to do uh, about the, the rehabilitation for people in the DC universe who are, like, you know, both, both heroes and villains who have went through a lot of shit. <laughs> so... Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a nice total touch. I, 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 that, that didn't feel forced to me. I, I kind of like that you're seeing that. Like, no, I agree. That that I'm completely fine with. That felt very natural. And maybe that'll be the, the kind of the, the silver lining of all this is that maybe it will actually get a really good Ivy story about her dealing with her trauma in that book. 
I hope so. Although the trauma is lessened now that she didn't kill people. That 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 is. I that mean, is she did true. take over the whole world, but it's not quite the same. She should feel guilty about that, though. <laughs> she should, but it's it's reversible. She's just like, all right, you're all free again now. Yeah. It's not it's not as big a deal as okay, she took some lives. It's not a big deal morally, perhaps. It's a big deal in terms of she accomplished this amazing, ridiculous. Oh, yeah, feat. yeah. <laughs> I mean, in terms, I'm just talking about in terms of her recovery arc. Yeah, okay. It would have more weight if it was okay. This there's something irreversible that she's done. All right. Okay. All right, well, we'll move on to, uh, to Superman then, uh, number 43, which is uh, Peter de Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. Gleason doing the art on this one as well. Uh, so this is... Obviously, we had some... Compl- we liked some of the last issue, but the start of it was really frustrating because of all the Bizarro World stuff. Uh, this yeah. issue, I think, is better. Uh, I, I liked pretty much all of it. I do think once everyone goes to Bizarro World towards the end, and it is our characters talking to the Bizarro people... But it still got a little bit annoying with the dialogue for a, a touch. It wasn't anywhere nearly as bad as the last issue, though. No, I think it's just a bit clunky here or there. It's not a. It's definitely much better. I just replied as well. Uh, Joe Prado is on the art as well. Is he? Oh, it wasn't on yes. Comicsology. Uh, so, so yeah. Uh, so some of my favorite stuff. Obviously, I like uh, John. You know, Boy's Arrow and Superman, like dealing with that and uh, the, the sort of things where Boy's Arrow kind of like starts to respect Superman and he's like, oh. You you know not not trust you, and you know things you know and bizarre speak. Yeah, which means Superman teaching John that you got to do bizarre. So you like you got to say yeah. he's done a bad job. Uh, my favorite stuff though is seemingly what they might be setting up in some way with uh, Kathy, who is now called Beacon, and nobody who we were introduced. Well, I, I think she was around before that, but but you know in this run she was introduced uh, in that issue s- some time ago when uh, Damien was around. So was that back when they introduced the Super Sons book? It might have been. Uh, Sounds yeah. about right. That was a while ago now, but yeah, maybe then. Uh, but yeah, they've got nobody like spying on Kathy to make sure they're okay. That, that, that them being Clark and Lois, <laughs> yeah. uh, just just to make sure she's fine. Um, so I don't know. Like, obviously, we know Tomasi said that he's got more plans for Damien and John post Super Sons, and I'm wondering if we're setting up some sort of new young team with these two as well. <laughs> oh yeah, that's just what we need. Another Titan style. Book. I, I I know. Yeah, that's another Titan style book, but. It, it, we're starting to see what John and Damien end up doing. I mean, all Damien's on Teen Titans, but we got got John and Damien from Tomasi in some way, and it feels. I mean, honestly, Kathy it does feel too good of a character to just abandon after this. I agree, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I feel like she's been wasted in the back half of this run, frankly. Uh, I do. I'm really happy. Uh, to see ever her again. since they moved away from Hamilton, I'm like, uh, can we can we get back to Kathy? And you know, she's got a name now, Beacon, a hero name. Yeah. Uh, and nobody's like you know she's got chemistry with her and I like nobody's grown on me as well I mean I feel like I've not seen her in a long time so I can barely remember what she was like but last time but she's got uh, attitude isn't she yeah in this issue yeah I'm, get, I'm getting I mean it's basically Lady John and Lady Damien uh, in some ways but kind of is yeah uh, but it's working uh, and I'm, I'm kind of digging the vibe so they end up all working together they, they go over uh, of course though this is after probably my favourite part of this issue which is the Gomez version of Damien from Bizarro World. Rob Zaro, I think it was called. <laughs> yeah. And he's got the little Gomez moustache, and he even tries to, like, kiss, I think it was nobody or Kathy, one of them, he grabs one of them, Yeah. and, and tries to do his Adam's family, you know, kiss as if it's Morticia, uh, and it was cracking me up, something awful. This, this weird, eccentric version of Damien. Yeah. Yeah, and his uh, his uh, beast. Uh, it's normally Goliath, isn't it? Yeah, but it's tiny here. Yeah. No, uh, that 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 mustache, that little Gomez Gomez mustache, was cracking me up. As soon as I turned that page, I was like, "Holy shit! This is this is the yeah. best issue of this this book in like twenty five issues." <laughs> I, uh, hands down, <laughs> it's when Superman shows up and he salutes to him, and he's like, "No, allow me to explain. I've got this all under control." I follow, <laughs> follow boy's arrow right now. Hawk's arrow is missing. <laughs> it's like hogs arrow <laughs> what's happening here yeah oh dear it's, it's like a proper little soldier oh the fact that bizarro lois is like attracted to superman as well and then bizarro <laughs> shows up and he's like oh what, what are you doing with bizarro boy and wife <laughs> yeah uh or what are you not doing sorry see it got, it got to a point where i just started knowing the word not and that was how i was reading it i just ignore that word and it just yeah yeah but then fine. every so often you're like right there's not a not so that means yeah. it is uh, but that, that was that was keeping me fairly going okay. 
Uh, but yeah, so basically, by the end of this, uh, Boy Zero ends up like helping shoot Bizarro off the planet, which is a cube, of course, not not a not not, not a sphere. Oh yeah, a cube. No. Uh, this, this is this is long established. Oh, I know, but I'm just saying, just as we because I think a lot of people might be this is the first time you know, encountering this. Oh, uh, that's true. We haven't been with this version of Bizarro for a while. Yeah, and uh, also I just. I mean, I've not really thought of this in a long time, but just because the idea that a lot of people maybe jumped on with Rebirth in terms of reading ongoing or, at the very least, keeping up to date with the podcast so they know what's going on as they read trades. Well, even New 52, I don't think we had this version. That's true, yeah. We, so, we, we were all just clone, right? Yeah. So, so it's been a while. So Superman goes after him. Uh, the kids are still on Bizarro's planet. Uh, so we'll see stuff with them probably. The big thing at the end though is that we're introduced to who are going to be the villains for this uh, this arc seemingly, which is a Legion of Fun, which is the Bizarro version of the Legion of Doom. Uh, notably, we have a Captain Cold who has flames instead of you know ice seemingly. Uh, we've yep. got a, a Black Manta who's got a, a rubber ring around him with little stars and fish on it because yep. I assume he can't swim. <laughs> probably not. No. <laughs> and that's, uh. That's why uh, we get a scarecrow with a happy face on him. Yep, it's a very old style scarecrow, isn't it? Yeah, we have a green lantern sinestro, which I mean, <laughs> that's not yep. that weird. We've seen that before, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just weird to see it again. Yeah, um, yeah, quite, quite, quite random uh, amount. Who's the? Is the, that main dude? Maybe uh, uh, Vandal Savage? Is that who that's maybe? I think so. Yeah, it's well, hard to tell because you, you don't sure. really get a good look at him, though, do you? I wasn't sure, but uh, no. Nah, so, really <laughs> interested ideas. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see this. I'm down. Uh, also, we we have a look. Probably my favorite part of the issue mm. is jumping off the back of last issue. Is just Clark and Lois. Just at oh home. yeah, watching maybe Stranger Things is is the implication I may be getting from that. Uh, it could be. They're kind of vague about it, but. Yeah, they are. They talk about binge watching scary shows, and you know she says nostalgia. So I'm like, yeah, maybe she says thing. nostalgia. Something. It's an old show, but then she says, "I want to see if they show the monster this season." I'm like, "Oh well, it's just like a new show then." It does, and yeah. so I was thinking that as well. I was like, "The the nostalgia of yeah." Know, that. So I'm, I'm thinking Stranger Things is what they were getting at, but uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I like when, when you know they're here upstairs, and Clark's like, "Right, maybe I'll just uh, X-ray vision up and see what's going on," and she's like, "No, only heat vision. I want more popcorn." Uh, I feel like he'd overdo the popcorn with the heat vision. <laughs> doesn't sound the most practical way of doing it, but whatever. It doesn't, but I'm sure he's well practiced. Yeah, that was the, the first part of the marriage, right? You have to learn to use your heat vision for popcorn, Clark. This, this, this. Lo- Lois has been demanding this for a while. Day number one. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> I guess we'll wrap up Superman. Uh, deals to say though, uh, I had a lot of fun with this issue. Is easily the most uh, like the back half of last issue and then this issue is easily the most I've enjoyed Superman's main book in. Since before Black Dawn. Yeah. Yeah, over a year. a year ago, wasn't it? Yeah. So, you know, nice that it's at least getting better before the run ends and before we get onto the new stuff. So. Kind of bittersweet, though, isn't it? Because you, yeah. you almost kind of just want it to be just, eh, whatever at the end. So it, you don't miss it then. And you really realise how much you've been missing, like, Kathy and that part yeah. of the stuff. That That's that part of the run. So. Yeah. so we'll move on to Justice League 41, which is obviously Christopher Priest and Philip Briones on the art. The Watchtower has landed in Africa. Uh, notable because uh, Priest li- wanting to use some of his Deathstroke stuff, <laughs> basically yep. uh, Red Lion jumps in uh, and so it's funny, after seeing Black Panther it's, it's really, no- I mean I knew this before, I think we already said he was basically a Red Black Panther, but after seeing the movie and being a bit more familiar with the character I feel like, no, he's he's, he's, like red, he's a Red Black Panther yeah. <laughs> it's not even he's got, a bit, he's got a bit of fur around his neck, but that's about it yeah, pretty much Right, I'm going to start with the highlight of the issue is that it opens with Baz still going on about this bloody London. Oh, season. yeah, fantastic. Uh, so, so here's the thing. I think the end of this page, the end of this scene, is hilarious. I don't like what it means about something that already happened. I agree, because we were speculating, like, right, okay. Yeah, so I, I still think there has to be a cause. Like, it just it feels so out of character for Jessica to have kissed Batman. However... Baz saying I want something to take my mind off this and then Jessica going I kiss Batman and him being like what? Like that is hilarious that is it is if we had like a better context for why it happened like like I don't know this would be great and I'd, I'd be along for the joke 
But right now, all I can think of is why did she kiss Batman? It's so out of character for her. It is. I don't get it. And it was such a weird moment at the time. So I still think there's going to be a reveal of some kind that explains why. Like I think I think he's intentionally like I think Priest is intentionally prodding us here, being like, hey, hey, you don't know what's happening yet. Yeah, yeah, but it kind of feels a bit like I know I don't know what's happening. Bloody tell me. I know, but it's annoying because it just it feels wrong. Um, it does. And I know Priest likes to do that. It's kind of annoying sometimes, though. Uh, most times I'm okay, because most times it's a mystery where it doesn't feel like something's wrong, but it's a mystery, yeah. right? It's, it's a, there's a question I want answered. Whereas this is like, no, no, no. This just isn't right. This needs fixing, not just answering. Yeah. Uh, but the main thing is that the Watchtower's in Africa, uh, and some of the league, Flash, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, and Batman? No, Superman. Superman, Superman not Batman. Yeah. Yeah, they're there and they're kind of dealing with it and there's like a civil war going on and they're basically like, basically these bad guys want to shoot all these refugees, but the refugees all went to the watchtower because like, okay, they just won't let anything happen there. But then they're just like, no, we can't interfere with all this. But, uh, yeah, this zone's safe while we're here. And then Wonder was like, yeah, but like, if this was like somewhere else, like we're not interfering because the government of this country will see it as like an infringement of their, you know, their, their rules. But, yeah. If this was in, you know, a stadium in Metropolis, we wouldn't even second guess like jumping in to save these people from being shot. You know, surely there's a line here that we are, that we should be crossing. You know, yeah. given what's happening. Um, and honestly, as someone who like, yeah, I, I think if a government's awful enough that it's letting people be shot, you know, innocent people be killed, I think they should probably intervene with that. <laughs> that's probably my stance. They probably on it. should, but like that, that's yeah. the thing. It's like okay, that's an international incident then. Yeah. Okay, the, there's diplomacy and all these things for a reason, and if they go and upset all that just because they can, where's the line then, right? It's okay if oh. if they if they're willing to make the call themselves now, when do they I, stop making the call? I I think I think you just define the rules in another way. You don't you don't necessarily define them by what is you know crossing a you know a political line. You define them by what what do you intervene for, and I think. That's when they say, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter what country it is, but if you're firing on civilians, we're stepping in and we're stopping that. We're not letting that. We, we're essentially saying, no, we're policing the planet as far as that's concerned. So, right, okay, but not here's happening. the thing. To, to, to you know, play the devil's advocate here. Go on. If, they, if they're going to step in and stop them being shot, mm -hmm. and this let's say this dictator is just going to kill them again, right? You know, you know they go yeah. away, give it three days. Should they just remove him from office? And... If so, which is you know a valid maybe maybe they should. At what point is it right? Okay, is this fascism because they're doing their own thing? They're the no, ones so, controlling. No, because you're you're taking the sleep where you're saying oh they should go and move him from office. No, no, no. They just look this guy in the face and say no, you can't do that. Right. And... Okay. But what about when they go and then he just kills them anyway? That's my point. Well, they, they, well, then they have to come back and deal with that. Right, then, no, I guess. That, that's that's my point, though, as well. Like, like they can save them here and now today. They can, you know, jump in front of the bullets. They can get them out of the way, but that doesn't solve the problem. If the if they if the the head of state wants to kill them, as soon as they leave the country, the head of state is going to kill them. So, if they're going to save them, should they not remove the dictator? I guess my answer to that is to have a, a constant presence of some kind as a deterrent. Is, is that feasible, though, for the Justice League? To have one or two people there, some B-listers <laughs> around as a constant I mean, presence, yeah, maybe. Take shifts. It, you got boom it, tubes. It, that's fair, but I mean, that's fine when it's just one country, but... Look, I'm not saying there's not complex, complex cities there. No, but no, I, I'm just I, saying I think that's the point of this, is, is why I'm getting yeah. into it. It's like, that's the whole point. Is that, that's why they don't cross the line. Because if they do it once, then it's, okay, but how far do we go? When do we, ho oh, 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 we should remove this person from office? What do, when do we say, right, no, we're taking control of this government and we're putting someone else in? Well, because I don't think they would ever get involved, or they shouldn't ever get involved on who's in power. I think it's just a, a, quite a simple thing where... They don't operate as a government. They're not. They're not. As much as we associate them with the U.S., they're not part of the U.S. They operate purely on a moral basis of well, certain things we're just not letting happen. Right. Uh, and most reasonable people will not, uh, you know, fight with the fact that shooting on innocent civilians is something that they should not be letting happen. Uh, so that's no, the. No, I, I, I agree with that. That, that I, is I've the just... idealistic uh, viewpoint I'm taking here. Um, is there weird complexities that come from that? Sure. 
but I, I, yeah, I think that's kind of what the run like here is supposed to be. Yeah, so, like you know, that. That's why I'm having this discussion. Is like okay, it wants you to think. Okay, but where's that line? Okay, if they do this, then what? And you know, how long can it go on before that? Because that's kind of the whole point. The U.S. is saying to them, "Hey, you you don't have any jurisdiction here. How do we know what's going on?" And they didn't have jurisdiction the, there either when they started. Right, exactly. Uh, but the point is that okay, they've kind of wormed themselves into the U.S. Right in that sense of like they're they're, they're accepted. But uh, the, the, now that the government and and the media is questioning, should they be? They need to train a few uh, superheroes that are locals. Yeah. Any local yeah, matters, so, right? You're in training. So, so hang on. What you're doing here is starting a guerrilla resistance. <laughs> oh, no, shut up, right? Look, <laughs> look, they are superheroes. They, 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 they see things that shouldn't be happening, and they, they swoop in and they save the day. Uh, they make it clear that they won't let that happen anymore, and they, they keep showing up. They, they, they make a point of it. They say, look, every time you try and do these bad things... We're going to keep being here. We're going to make sure you can... It's kind of like how when Lex Luthor was president, the whole idea is you've got the Superman looking over your shoulder to make sure he's not doing anything too shady. I agree with your idealistic here. Yeah. But I'm just saying, it's not... You're using superheroes here instead, but it's not that different to the US government going and saying, right, okay, here's some rebels. We're going to... We're going to support you, and you can do you can do it yourselves, but we'll just support you. It's not that different to that. Look, if they already have a superhero of their own, if, they, if someone rises up uh, in, the, in this country in Africa, right, and they become a hero, and then the Justice League says, hey, do you want to be, like... You know, just not not trained in the terms of combat. I mean, maybe, but just like, okay, do you want advice as to how to go about this? Because we already did this elsewhere. Okay. Because Justice League is not affiliated with a country. It is not. Right? They are the Justice League for the world. Yes. Therefore, there is nothing wrong with this. Um, uh, do you know what? I just want to say at this point. This is probably the best thing about this run that is actually having this. That's the that's the debate of this run, right? Yeah. Um, as far as I'm concerned, though, to kind of like just go back around to the point, is that the whole point of superheroes, the whole point of vigilante in the first place, to, to boil it to Batman, is that he operates outside the law. He has a higher set of rules for himself because he has to hold himself to a higher standard. That's why he doesn't kill and do other things. He, he doesn't have a problem with a police officer defending himself and, you know, shooting someone if, it, if, the, if the situation absolutely calls for it, right? Yeah, he, he hates guns, but he's never told police officers not to carry yeah, them. Yeah, he understands that Gordon needs one and that the situation may arise where he needs it, but he holds himself to a higher standard because he operates outside the system. He has to yes. hold himself to a higher potential, to inspire, to be this thing, blah, 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 blah. Uh, t- to me, that kind of extends to all superheroes. Is they hold themselves to a higher standard. They, they won't cross lines. They won't kill people. But they operate outside the rules. That's kind of the point. Yeah. So I'm on Wonder Woman's side here, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. okay. Even though I understand Superman's point. Uh, but then, obviously, the big end of the issue is that a bullet ricochets off Superman and goes into Wonder Woman. And she's down. Yeah. Looks pretty rough. Does look pretty rough. So I'll be honest, I thought it was a weird part in this issue where Aquaman's like checking out, like the, the, like Batman and Aquaman are checking out various people who help build the Watchtower to see if that's the fan, right? Yeah. And Aquaman's like in like you know covert gear, and he's he's just snuck into this bedroom and he's looking at all these things, and this guy's and like a cardboard a, Wonder Woman cut out, life yeah. size. This guy's like a pure Justice League, like you know, fanboy, and it felt so weird for Aquaman to be dressed like this that I thought it was the fan who just still had his Aquaman beard on. I did too. And it wasn't until he like contacted Batman and said, "No, it's not this guy." I'm like, "Oh, it's actually Aquaman." Okay. <laughs> yeah, I All was right. like, I was like, I mean, I, I guess it's more stealthy than as usual, but. Yeah, was was the baseball cap necessary? I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, I I, I just I, I assumed it was the fan, and he, he still he, he just had parts of his Aquaman disguise still on. Yeah, yeah, no, I got but that. Hey-ho, whatever. Uh, but yeah, and but then, then Batman, Batman, is, Batman gets to deal with it. Yeah, Batman gets to deal with things. Yeah. Uh, go on then. What is Batman doing? So I, the, what I'm assuming is the fan shows up, and he's got like a bunch of like 
technology from all of them. He's got a weird combined look. Like he's got Baz's sort of mask and you know his green stripes. He's got a sort of Superman esque logo. Yeah, and... he's got like the shoulder pads are kind of Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah, the the orange is kind of Aquaman's there. Not, not that Wonder Woman has shoulder pads, but just the the look of them, they look kind of like. I think the the for the the knee guards, they look very uh, Wonder Woman's. Yeah. Like the but I don't know, uh, you know, like the the orange chainmail underneath is, is Aquaman there. So yeah. You can see all this mishmash. He kind of has this weird sort of Green Lantern ring. That yeah. Kind of just shoots green electricity, right? It's a, it's a whole it's a whole thing. And he's basically like, I'm the problem you can't solve. That's basically the whole the yeah. whole thing. It's, 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 it's a thing he's been saying. Uh, and then of course Redline uh, puts his hand right through Cyborg and starts dragging him off. Uh, and that's kind of that's kind of the issue. Um, it, it was it was it was a fine. It, it's it's it is notable though that I'm, I'm I've been finding that I've been putting this these issues off a little bit more as we get into this run, this short run. Admittedly, we've only got a few issues left. Uh, because it, is, it tends to be quite dense, it tends to be quite wordy, and I feel like in an effort to actually fit his entire thesis of Justice League into this run, it does feel a little bit rushed in some ways. Yeah, I think his death stroke works because it's so spread out. Like I get what he's doing, he takes his time, and there's, there's a valid criticism that maybe he takes too long. But I think overall, that's going to read much better in the long run oh, as, yeah. a, as a as a story. As that, a, this is his run on Deathstroke. That still suffers from being a bit too dense at times and a bit being a bit too complex for its own good. Just at least monthly. Maybe when it's yeah in trade, it won't have that effect. But right. uh, Justice League feels like this weird middle ground, and it's kind of yeah, like it's, it, what it's playing with is great, but it, it still sometimes feels like it's taking these little leaps. It, it feels like he has a, a a story for thirty issues of these themes that he wants to explore, hmm. and we're getting it in like what seven or eight. Yeah, so I think it's slightly more. I think it's more like ten because it's going to be two trades. Uh, all right, fair enough. Um, I was ballparking. Yeah, I can't uh, remember what number it goes up to. But we, we end next month, so I, I think we only have uh, two more. Two two more issues left of this, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the uh, next month's uh, May, April, and then May, of course, is uh, No Justice. So. No Justice, yeah. So, yeah, it's ending next month. So, we have two at the most. So, there you go. So, I mean, like I say, it's playing with some interesting things. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes. The thing is, I really love the ideas of what it's doing. Yeah. And I love the character interactions. I think they are been legitimately fantastic. Yeah. It's just there's there's too much story for the amount of issues that he's got. Yeah, that's, that's probably the case. But with that, uh, we'll move on to Green Lanterns uh, number forty three. Tim Silly writing V Kenneth, uh, sorry V Kenneth Marion on art. I can't speak today apparently. <laughs> uh, so this is wrapping up this uh, superhuman trafficking arc uh, with the the Order of the Steed and scraps and all this stuff. Jessica's like doing brain surgery on like fifty superheroes at the same time uh and yeah t- talking about just way i love at one point a ring because there's like, there's like a one of the aliens like mutates into this like three-headed beast thing and i like that the, the, the ring is like hey jessica there is like a, a knockoff like special effect from john carpenter's the thing coming your way i appreciate yeah. that that very specific reference yeah yeah that was pretty good i appreciate it loads uh, and yeah, so I enjoyed, I thought the action in this issue was pretty great. Uh, I liked all the stuff with scraps. Scraps apparently does not want to cross that moral line. She does not want to like cause collateral damage, uh, mm. and the bad guy kind of like preys on that a little bit uh, to get around her. Uh, but luckily, Jess being connected to everything through all this stuff actually like jolts her through it, and that kind of is what saves yep. the day. Uh, as Simon's going one on one with uh, the dude that kidnapped Night Pilot, so. Uh, Oh, action was good. Art was pretty good as well. I thought. Uh, yeah, I agree. It's uh, this almost suffers from being the wrap up of. Okay, this is the end of the art. Yeah. It's it's the big action sequence. It's what you what you expect it to be. It looks good. It does exactly what it has to do. Yeah, it's got some nice moments. Then the dude who's fighting Baz like kind of combines with the alien monster thing to make a bigger. Yeah, they're, they're, I think they're both Darlins, right? Yeah, to make a bigger alien monster. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. That was pretty cool. That full page spread where it's like the big giant monster staring down Baz is pretty good. And then you got Baz fighting it with a sword and shield. Yeah. Uh, and you have a couple more hints of various things. You have the rest of the core shop and they're like, hey, you did a good job, Lanterns. And Scraps is like, oh, hire me to uh, 
look after these refugees, like escort them back wherever they're going. Uh, yeah. And you got uh, Nate Pilots all back into Simon because you know they saved the day, uh, which kind of gets to like where there's potential things not to like if you, if you're against the idea of them having uh, Baz and Jessica ever being remotely a couple. Uh, is Jessica Audley looks jealous when when Night Pilots kind of see? This is the thing. I don't think it was jealousy. No, I jealousy. think it was more. She she looks disappointed, but I don't think she's disappointed about that. Like it's him. I think it's just that. Oh okay. look, he's got something and I don't. Okay, I like that read on it. I like that actually. I'll, I'll take that. Uh, but she's all nervous. She she doesn't admit that the, the dating app gave give her him. But he does. He's like, oh, by the way, what's funny though? I got you at one point. Uh, yeah. As he's flying off, um, but hey, so so the whole thing at the end here is that he's like, oh, you you're okay with being alone, and you're 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 all like comfortable with that, and then she goes in, she's like, yeah, yeah, comfortable, sure, <laughs> that, that's what I am, uh, yeah. and you see that, so the, the ring throughout this issue kind of did went one step further and kind of spoke in her head like it was the voice of God, uh, but it was, yeah, but you used Simon's voice, you used Simon's voice, yeah, which again, it's, it's kind of playing with her being kind of being insecure and maybe she's not sure if she's supposed to have feelings for him or, yeah, or whatever. I really don't want them to go down that route. I still don't think they are. As, as much as they're, they're definitely teasing it in some ways, I don't, I don't think that's what they're, they're doing. They're teasing it, but I really hope they're not. Uh, but we see that our, our ring, because we know there's a story coming up soon with, uh, the Guardians realising that Jessica's ring's doing lots of things that the rings are not supposed to do. We actually, it's, it's in the, the newest solicits. The newest solicits. And I think this is kind of where this is starting to go down this path, but yep. it, it's making like constructs who are talking to her in her room, uh, they, they, you know, they almost like giving her company. And I'm not getting the impression that she's doing this herself. Like, this is not her doing this. I, I agree. Also, this is a, I want to give a shout out to the letter in here. Mm. They just look evil when they talk that way because the ring oh, yeah. has always got the same same speech bubble. It's got the same text font, whereas you see this, it's the squiggly bubbles. It's the the kind of the the shorter text. Is you know, it's a bit off, and it's just like okay, no, no, this is wrong. Yeah, it's the it's like there's like a manifestation of her like doubt and her anxiety and like all her struggles. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know this is obviously well, obviously her ring came originally. You know when when she first got it, or got her powers, you yeah. know was was the, the the power ring, and she went through all that stuff before. So it's like okay, it, it kind of preys back onto that. So yeah, uh, so that's that's seemingly what we're getting to. Uh, obviously, the, the the story about the guardians getting involved in it or not until later, but it seems like some of this Jess stuff is going to start creeping in uh, and maybe be the focus of the next little while. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's worth noting, it does say here, next going hunting, and these people that are created are very clearly hunters. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, also worth mentioning, she is eating, uh, well, she's eating popcorn, but she's got a big belly burger cup next to the, the, the little uh, uh, yeah. futon, and she's watching what looks like a horror movie, because there's a monster on the screen. There admittedly, is, and lots of clothes all over the floor. Admittedly, he is smiling, so maybe it's more like a Monsters, Inc. type deal, but <laughs> I, 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 was, I was assuming she uh, was watching a horror movie, because, you know, I like horror movies, so... Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I, I think Jessica has shown, shown she's got good taste with that with the, the ring making that thing reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to pick it up from somewhere, right? So that's that's Green Lanterns. So it's a pretty good issue. Obviously, uh, we don't want them to go down this certain path. Uh, although you you kind of helped me talk me out of uh, some of my fears. I, honestly, my my fear still comes back at the end where. Okay, so the app did it for Simon as well, and and you know he's playing it off as a joke. He's like, yeah, it's funny. I got you, but. I hope it doesn't go down that way. I really do. I still have faith that it's not. I I, I think they realise that they've got a good thing with having them be platonic. I really hope so because I I just I don't want it to ruin it. Yeah, yeah. So, but no, uh, it was a pretty good issue though. So uh, that'll take us on to Nightwing Forty One, which is the end of the Humphreys well run <laughs> as well as arc. Uh, so Sam Humphreys writing, uh, Jamal Campbell and Bernard Chang both on the art. Which is interesting because Chang, of course, we liked a lot, and Jamal was the, Campbell was the one who was doing quite well of emulating it when he when he wasn't there. So yeah, uh, yeah so the art's pretty good, is what we're saying. It's the art that we have liked in this Nightwing run. Um, yeah. This is the big action showdown where Nightwing sort of like you know we left another big, big cliffhanger. He's at the explosion in the hotel, and we see that he actually goes out the window on the, the the motorbike at the last second. He uh, crams onto the crane. Yeah, he he hooks onto the crane. And then we get a big set piece where he like picks up the limo that's got the judge in it, and then the the judge. And I love this actually that the judge gets out and starts like sort of dancing around the the the, the hook 
as if you know, as if he's in singing in the rain. He's like sort of it dancing. Is, yeah. he's, just, he's just enjoying the fact that he's you know flying in the air. He doesn't give a shit, does he? He doesn't. No. Um, I also I really like how it's bookended with like going to see Guppy. Like I, I like that opening with Guppy. Yeah, yeah. Coming to the, the visitors. This is the thing. This is a this is a really good solid final issue to this this story. It's it's been a really weird up and down of a an arc. It has. Uh, it, it, that's the problem. As good as this issue is, as the end of an arc, it kind of like it doesn't reach the heights it should because the arc has lost some of its weight. Yeah, the the flashback issues, especially the first one, kind of derailed it. But the, like that's what this was what we liked about Nightwing. Like his first two issues, this this feels like it's fitting conclusion to what that started. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's all there. Uh, we find out it's Vibada, like, yeah, she did shoot Nightwing, but she, she had enough control, she, like, sort of, she intentionally didn't kill him, like, she kind of, like, yeah. fought, you know, he, he says she Which pulled her aim. speculated at the time, right? Like, it was, you know, she, she definitely had to shoot him, but she didn't kill him. Well, no, I think our speculation was that after the fact that that, that was, like, a get-out-of-jail-free clause, like, because she still hit him, it counted as completing the contract, if you will. Mm. So now she wasn't hunting them anymore, uh, and it seems to be that was also true, but, yeah. uh, she, like, Nightwing specifically says, no, she pulled her aim, uh, yeah. you know her, uh, his friend yeah she set him up but she's not a bad person and we see that Nightwing actually fights against uh, like because you know the judge to get out of it the last second like gives him a chip and is like hey you know you can let this all go you just have to let me go back to the sea and everything's okay and you can be yeah. fine um, and obviously you, you sort of read it as like Nightwing the reason why he fights it and does go after him and takes him in because uh, we see that the judge is in like a tank like all tied up at the end like under the prison Uh the reason why he fakes it is because he says, "Oh, you can like, like let go of all this, like you know, thirty-two murders. You can get that off your conscience." And you could almost read it as he got that off his conscience because the only way that could happen is if he took the judge in, and that's why it doesn't work. Definitely, you, you could read it as that rather than he actually just outright fakes the, the the power or whatever. Yeah, you can say he takes the coin and does it, but the way he does it, yeah, it kind of fulfills it and and does both for him. Yeah, so you, you, it's kind of up to you which way you want to read that. As, as if like, he fights it because he's, he's dick and he can do that, goddammit, because Nightwing. Or uh, <laughs> you can read it as, no, no, the thing he told him to do involves taking him in because the judge is an idiot. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, and I mean that. I, I, I'm not criticising the writing there. I'm, I think this is good. I'm just saying... No, it's the character yeah. overlooking something. Yeah. It's He thinking he's getting out of jail free. I mean, literally, but you know, he's thinking he's mm. getting away with it, and, and it's actually that's just doubling down. Also, I just want to say all these pink teddy bears that have the bombs in them, they should be blue and they should be called Bebo, because much like how you can have Big Belly Burger just kind of hanging around in the background, I feel like Bebo from Legends of Tomorrow could be added to the DCU, and we could. I, I would that. be one hundred percent down for Bebo being a regular edition. Yeah, not a plot point or anything, just something that's there, you yeah. know. Just, you know, sometimes you know when they walk past the store, and you're yeah. like, especially when it's around like, doing the Christmas issues. Or, or maybe you're in a, like, a house where there's kids and they've got toys lying around. Have a Bebo. Just, just throw a Bebo, yeah. yeah that's I, I don't do. think that's too big an ask. No, I, I think that's a fine idea. Uh, so, no, so Bruce Wayne gave money to, you know, save the tree, and they got, like, seeds, and they're, they're planting these trees all over the, the, the country, different cities, and just Nightwing, Nightwing plants one across the, across the road from his gym. Uh, but yeah, and Guppy makes some good points. He's like, "Hey, it's like you're forgiven all these people. You're forgiven the detective for shooting you. You're to get forgiven you know, your friend for betraying you, but you can't seem to forgive yourself, man." Mm. <laughs> Do it. So, um, but no, I like that. Uh, so no, that, that was a solid final issue to it. it. Obviously, it's a shame that a couple of the issues, you know, kind of ruined parts of the story. Uh, I still think, for the most part, though, that when this is in trade form, this will be quite a good read. It's just you know you'll have that you'll have that one flashback issue that will like it'll be a, it'll be a good read, but not the great read that it could have been. Yeah, it'll be kind of like see he see that that third issue and the thing. Read the present day parts, but just skip the flash. Just skim through that. Don't don't read the whole. I'll thing. be honest. This is one of those that if someone asks me, oh, should I get that? I'll be like, eh, if it's on sale, go ahead. Hmm. But I don't think I could say, oh, full price, definitely go go and buy it day one. You must read it. That's fair. It's a shame because it felt like it was going to be when it started. Um, it did. It really did. I remember being so optimistic. But it, it's just, it's weird that it was like two great issues, then that really bad issue. And it was back to being great. Then there was like, it was an okay issue, and then back to being great here at the end. Like yeah. you know, it's okay. just really bizarre. But uh, hey ho. So but still, overall, I think it comes out in the positive. It's just you know, it's a shame that it's not Murky, as amazing though, as it could it? have been. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we're still getting Chang around soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We mentioned him earlier, right? 
Yeah, yeah, he's on a uh, Titans book, I said, I think. Yeah. Let me scroll it, it, down, it, I'll tell you. <laughs> it was on something, for sure. Yeah, yeah, he's on Teen Titans with uh, Adam Glass. So. Yeah, uh, so uh, I think Chang's a fantastic artist, so that'll have a good sense of style, if nothing else. Yep, no, that's good. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, so we'll move on then to um, Batwoman number 13. Margaret Bennett, of course, writing Fernando Blanco on the art. Uh, Which is interesting because it means he's become the, the series regular. Because he, he did has, the, yeah. the last arc and then obviously he didn't do the, 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 the in between. But Yeah, there was a fellow artist and then he's, he's back for this. Um, and this was, I think, the art as well. Because obviously, I think the art in this book has suffered because it started off with Epting and Epting was so phenomenal that everything afterwards felt kind of. It's such a high bar to live up yeah. to, isn't it? And, and Blanco has been. Solid, Admirable. yeah. Like I, I think there's a couple of moments in this. I was like, oh, you know, I really like that panel. It's, it's, it's when uh, Batwoman lands next to the her, her old house, and it's that full sort of page, and she's like, you know, she's quite small in the frame, and it's the whole building in front of her. Yeah, oh, it's a really nice page, a really nice panel. I really like that. Um, so that's kind of is all building up to the big twist. And to be fair, back at the start of the run, we were saying, oh, I bet Sophia is the the you know the head of this whole thing. Many arms of death. It's going to be her. And to be fair, they subverted those expectations. Um. The question is, though, is that subversion uh, a satisfying reveal? The reveal here at the end that Beth, her sister, is secretly behind this and that she was the one who's been doing all this stuff and manipulating her. And Sophia, well, she's been up to kind of some no-good stuff uh, and she's the one who lures Batwoman here, is like, hey, like I, I just did this to test like where you'd go. Like, I, like The person doing this is doing all this to mess with both of us and she wants to mess with me to get to you as well. Like, yeah. And we find out the leader of this, the one who's actually, you know, Knife is working for her, the, the, the evil twins are working for her. We find out at the end, this is all Beth. Uh, or as they call her, you know, her evil persona, Alice, at the end. Uh, so, on the one hand, I like it. <laughs> because it is kind of like, okay, so this is very much her joker. It always comes back to her. But on the other hand, it's always coming back to her. <laughs> Like, could it could it have been something different we were building to? I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of disappointing. It's like, all right, I get it, but I like, you know, it, it felt like us. Sphere was a a new addition. Yeah. Like, oh, let's build up something new. Do, for do, Kate. Do, do I think the problem is? I think it works really well on its own, but I don't feel that like the runners as a whole is built up to this. Agreed. If that makes sense, like I, I think the actual reveal on its own makes a lot of sense. I like the whole, when she calls the, the hospital and she's like, oh, is my sister there? And they're like, oh, they're, she's on a day trip. She can't talk to you. Yeah, you're, or you're lying and, you know, you're lying for the man arms of death who've already taken her. Uh, I like the sort of the, the tease of that. Like, I thought that was a really good little little scene, uh, that page. But, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of I'm, I'm 50-50 kind of on the reveal itself. I think it works really well on its own in a vacuum. I don't think the run necessarily has built me up to th- this reveal. Agreed. It's 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 like okay, it's it's fine. Because but... the, the way it's playing it is is that Beth is oh this is like a big part of your life that I'm going to mess with, but the whole runs felt so focused on the island and that year she spent there and Sophia that it feels like Beth almost feels tacked on now. It, it kind of feels like a, a swerve for the sake of a swerve. Yeah. But I mean, it could. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I think the resolution could be good. I think obviously, uh, I think the issue itself is fine. It just didn't feel like the run itself is actually built up to this. Yeah, pretty much. There's some, you know, really great moments, but you know, and it's a it's a solid issue. Because I actually, just... I really like the whole extended chunk of her getting into the house because it felt kind of like, oh, she's getting into this like you know, almost uh, abandoned horror house, and it's like she her narration as she's looking through the house and seeing various like disturbing things. I, I really liked all that part. It felt really properly. Had a good tone to it. It was kind of creepy. No, I agree. Um, that, that was a great atmosphere. I love the uh, the panel of knife uh, when it first cuts to her, mm. and she's sitting there with all the the swords and the blades and all the stuff on the wall and the in arranged in the pattern. It looks fantastic as an image. Yeah, I actually I was really disappointed at first in that when it cut to her because the way it cut from Sophia saying, "Oh, don't you know who's really behind all this?" and it cut to knife. I was like, "Is it's knife as the leader? Really?" Like uh, for a second, I thought that was like what they were doing with the cut. Uh, but well, no, it's, misleading, yeah. yeah. I, I get you. Yeah, but it, it, it obviously builds up to the, the real reveal where she goes in and says, ah, there's you, Alice, and she's like, yeah, me. I'm evil. Yeah, yeah. Same old, same old. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it would, obviously I think it makes sense to eventually go back to Alice and like have her be around as the, the proper big bad, but it does kind of feel a shame that 
we didn't get like a, a full out big bad first that was a new big bad that we then came back round to the full. It really felt thing. like we were having an addition with knife and you know uh, Sophia like uh, mm. the, the the twins. It's like okay, we're adding a new set of this uh, of characters for Kate, and obviously those characters are around, but they're undermined a bit when they're just working for someone else. Yeah, so she still only really has the one big bad villain. Yeah. So I guess that will take us on to our next bit, which is Super Sons 14. Did you stop reading this a while ago? I, I, feel I like did, yeah. You did. Uh, which is a shame, because I think this is better than Superman, typically. I think it is as well, uh, from what I read. Yeah. But I just ran out of time, and obviously Superman was the more important uh, read. Yeah. Um, Outside of the two issues on the planet they went to, this has been... That, 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 that's where yeah. I left it. Yeah. But outside of that, this has been great. And this issue... We ended off last issue with um, like them finding out Tyler's going after uh, Lois, right? That's like that's her target, and we also find out in this issue that uh, she only took that target because she knew it would draw out Damien. <laughs> it was like that's just beneath me, just assassinating some reporter. But I'm doing it because I want to lure in Damien and see what he does. Uh, but what I really like about it, so, so Superboy and Damien are rushing to Metropolis, or no, actually I think it was Gotham. Uh, yeah, because Lois is there interviewing someone about something, and they go to Gotham, and. Superboy like jumps in, grabs the bullet just in time. Damien's on the roof because she was, you know, uh, Talia was going to snipe her. So T- Damien's on the roof fighting Talia, and it's like the whole fighting's going on. And she's like, ah, you know, you're, you're half the, the child I train. And he's like, oh, is that right? And I, I love that this is a scene of a, like a, a, you know, a 13 year old kid kicking his mother in the face, and you're rooting for him. It's like, yeah, <laughs> like take down Talia. Uh, my favorite part though, actually, is that after like uh, John saves, he ends up having to like. Do something else in the street. There's like a like uh, some some cronies, you know, from the from the league or whoever's with Talia, that John takes care of, and eventually like the like Lois like sees him outside and like you know uh, the woman she's interviewing comes out with, with her, and she has to like talk to him not as his mother but as like you know someone who doesn't know who it is you know secret identity, yeah. and what I really liked about it is it almost felt like John's first time having that Clark like or Superman Lois moment where. She's like, oh, what are you doing here, Superboy? And he's like, oh, I'm here saving the day, but uh, you know everything's okay now. And she's like, oh, very good. And it's just like it's just, it was the, the look in her face. The art was very good um, uh, from Carlo Bar- Bar- Barberi, who's did the art in this one. Uh, Jimenez was on this for most of it. It's changed. He's not quite as good as Jimenez, but he's still very, very good. But the the, the facial expression on Lois is she's sort of like, hmm, okay, good good job, Superboy. Uh, don't stay out too late. I bet you've got a mother somewhere who's uh who's worried about you. Uh, yeah. Mm, but, sounds uh, about right. Uh, so, but no, all, all that stuff was really fun. And then, uh, yeah, Damien sort of, you know, he actually like after Talia leaves, like Tal- Talia's all like, ah, you, you know, one day I will, I will break what the, what Bruce has done to you, and you will, <coughs> you will become the heir that you were supposed to be, and you will be by my side, and blah blah blah. And she runs off, and John's like asking Damien a question, and Damien flies off, and it feels like he's actually pissed off and left. But then he actually comes back at the end to kind of explain. Like he's like, first he's all, you know, I'm not going to explain. Like I don't need to like describe what's happening here. Uh, I'm I'm just going to get the exact uh, conversation in front of me. But the the but he, he kind of rides back around because like he's like, oh, you know, Damien, why don't you like talk? Because Damien's all, oh, your mother's safe. And he's like, oh yeah, that's fine, thanks. And he's like, asking, he's like, all right, so let's uh, talk about uh, you know what's what's going on. Uh, and he comes back. And he's like, okay, right, so she trained me as a toddler and all that. So basically he's opening up. It's like a scene of him opening up. Also, at one point he calls him J. Just, you know, the letter J. Which, oh, that's cool. He's got, okay. you know, I, I could, I could, I think I could like the idea of Damien having a nickname for him. It's, it's actually kind of, not not like a, a, like a, like a mean nickname. Like, it's just, he's, he's got a nickname for him now. I guess. I think my problem is J is this, is, it takes the same amount of time to say as John. It does. But that's, that so I feel like if you're going to do a nickname, you might as well do something cool. That's more a critique of everyone who does that, though, because that does happen. It does, and I will critique everyone who does that, because they're idiots. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they have a bit of a bonding moment, and uh, John's like, uh, yeah, 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 you, you know, you're making choices. You, 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 you're the only, the only one uh, winning is you. That's why we're pals. And he sort of pats him on the back, and Damien looks disgruntled, as, as always. And then they go walking off... Uh, not into the sunset, they're in an alleyway. But it's got that sort of low angle, it's them two walking yeah, off yeah. as they're as they're talking. Um and the, yeah, it's just a funny little gag at the end where he's like, Hey, train me how to use a sword, Damien. He's like, Hey, you you train me how to fly, I'll i I'll teach you how to use the sword. He's like, Hey, that's not fair. Um 
Then stop. And it says next day, Kid Amazo's back. That's what we're getting back to next. Like so we all, is this book coming to an end soon, or is that just me? No, no issue 16 is the last one. This is right. issue 14 we're on, so we've got two left. Also, uh, they announced uh, an omnibus basically uh, for yeah. later in the year with all the issues, all the the issues from the Super Sons crossover of tomorrow. You know, all the issues of Superman yes. and Titans, uh, and then the annual and whatever else. So it's, it's got in the first two, the two Superman issues that led into it. That's there as well. So it's going to be about twenty five issues or so. Yeah, so they've got an omnibus coming. Uh, and Tomasi said that he's not done with these two characters. There's something planned, which is why we were speculating that maybe Kathy and uh, nobody is going to. Be with them do, or something. Do their own little team. Yeah, no, I'm down for it. So, so we'll see. We'll see where that goes. But hey, uh, so that was Super Sons. Uh, I had a blast. Uh, there was almost nothing I didn't like about this issue. Uh, I, I will likely pick up the omnibus and just read it then. That's that's fair. Uh, but no, it's super tight. All the things it's doing. I I love the again the super the super boy Lois kind of pretending that they don't know each mm. other thing was it was just it was just bringing a smell in my face. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, so that'll take us on to Aquaman 34, Dan Amnett writing, and the fill-in artist of Kelly Jones, uh, because I, I, I didn't know that was this different artist, and I opened the first page and went, oh wait, hold on, this is not the same, <laughs> I almost yeah. got whiplash. No, no, I like Kelly Jones, it just feels tonally inconsistent. It does. I, I like Kelly Jones as well, but it's, it's completely different. And it's very clear that once I started reading this, oh wait, this is this is a completely a filling issue. He's a, uh, to, to his credit, Abnet said, okay, right, so we did an issue so the artist can get back on time for the, the next arc. So he wrote an issue focusing on the villain uh, Wrath and sort of doing that as a standalone little one issue story so that it, it kind of fit with a different artist. It still felt so different, though, that it didn't even feel like it's in the same place. <laughs> it does. And honestly, I mean, from the whole issue as a fill-in kind of feels redundant. Like, there are points where they tell me it's in the same... Like, it's a... Mm. You know when they have the, the captions that tell you the locations? Yeah. They're still in the exact same style. I'm like, okay, so you, you're doing that, but the art's so different. And then I'm like... I don't think I really needed anything in this issue, though. I don't no, think I, it adds I, much. I, I agree. This is purely a fill-in to, to kill time I for the artist. I honestly feel like... You should have just taken the, the the issue off. Yeah, I I agree. I think just taking the month off. Uh, but we have it, uh, and I think this is you know this is where Abnet uh, has trouble is when he has to just kill time. He, I think there's some writers who are really good at just coming up with little one issue stories to just have like a yeah, fun Tom little one issue. Yeah, a few. Yeah, and it, that's worked really well. Uh, whereas Abnet, when he has to kill time, we get kind of just these redundant stories of Wrath's past, and the, the only thing that really comes out of this is that. Uh, his own counsel are kind of plotting against him, so he's like full on like determined to get rid of all them. He gets uh, the villain from the Ninth Trade because we, we kind of find out he's he was in the Ninth Trade, uh, and he had this this friend who became the 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 villain that we had earlier on the run that yeah. you know, attacked Aquaman, the one who had magic powers, uh, yeah. and he's basically letting him kill the the current head of the the magic, you know, school. school. Yeah, yeah, the Silent School, and now he's the head of the Silent School. And he opens this big door that's like, oh no, this is the forbidden magic that we shouldn't be, you know, opening. Yeah, uh, unleashes some demon. Yep, yep, yep. So we get the idea that maybe his time was going to be coming to an end anyway because those around him are starting to look at him as being like, you know, going off his rocker. Uh, but now he's opened this big magic evil uh, and he's going to have that on his side to fight Aquaman. So it should make it more of a fight, you know, more you of know a what? big fight. This is the thing though. I don't think this issue is objectively bad. Like there's nothing. Oh sure. That, it's just kind of pointless, and this reveal at the end, I would have loved to have learned that in context of the story. So when Arthur gets up there, tries to mm. fight him, and then it's like, oh, he's got this power. Where you did know, this come from? I think I agree that on its own, it's not a bad issue. I think my biggest problem with it though is I felt like it was taking me away from the main plot. Yeah. It felt Indeed. like it was a weird interruption to what, what I was enjoying in the book. So I'm still looking forward to the next issue as I would be anyway because it will be back to the main plot. Uh, Especially since I think Mira was a pretty sh- decent pr- issue as well. Uh, I know you weren't as keen on it, but... Yeah, speak for yourself on that one. <laughs> but I like that more than this, by far. Uh, I mean, I like what it does for Wrath. I like having him having his past and that he's determined to, like, be better. Because he, even he looks down in the ninth train now. He's like, no, nah, like, they're scum now. I'm better than that. I've risen above that. Uh, yeah, it's just... It just feels so pointless. I, I, I know they don't want to skip months, but I really feel like they should have done yeah, I feel it feels like a felon. Um, I, I think the only notable thing that comes out of it is the idea that he has this relationship with the other villain from the Ninth Trade. Yeah, yeah. It, like I say, it's not offensively bad, but it's just 
all right, I, I wasted 10 minutes reading it that I probably didn't need to. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we have this big evil, and it, it, it becomes Monster Wrath yeah. at the end. Oh, so not Monster... It's not Wrath, actually. It's his body no, no, it's the other monster. one. That, yeah. that is Because he's bound his will to him. He's yeah. this creepy sea monster. It becomes Monster version, yeah. So... No, so it should lead to some interesting action next time. Uh, looking forward to getting back to the main story, though. So it's just, it's, it's just a shame to have a weird off month. Uh, uh, the the annual was the same way, but the annual was uh, not happening. The, the annual was just someone else doing a right, real city and and that was an annual. So you already had an issue that month. Yeah, this feels like you know in a double shipping month, I wouldn't have felt this way. But I'm like, okay, this is well one issue this month. And this was it. I'd rather have just gone, right, I don't have an issue, and that's fine. I, can, I don't have to build myself up for, like, you know, I look forward yeah. to Aquaman now. I, I do too, and I'm still looking forward to the next one. It was just, this is a fill-in. Yeah, but I, would, I went looking forward into this, and then I, I was like, okay, now I'm disappointed. Whereas if I'd just gone, right, you don't have one, but, you, you, you know, nothing's changing about the next issue, I think I'd prefer that. Yeah. All right, so uh, we will move on then to... Well, kind of the final book, because we got Connor's Corner with Red Hood. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, the final new book of the week, which is The Brave and the Bold, Batman and Wonder Woman number two, uh, Liam Sharp, both writing and art. Uh, and, yeah, so the king's been murdered in Tyrion the Gog, and th- I think I'll, I'll critique... Well, not a critique, but just... The, the downside to this issue is that we all know that this is going to lead to Wonder Woman saying, hey, I'm going to bring in the detective who's Batman... Uh, oh, that's fair. Because you know, out of a six-issue series, and it takes till the end of issue two to get to that, there is a yeah. an argument that, that that is maybe too long. Yeah, that maybe this shouldn't have been six issues. Maybe it should have been one, one or two less. If that, if you know, and condense this down. But hey, um, obviously it looks fantastic again, and uh, I, I enjoy it quite a bit. This is the other one that I left to last because I knew it was going to be a bit of a chore to read. This, this took me twice as long as any other book to read this this week. Because I do find some of the Celtic words to be a pain. Uh, the font as well with a lot of these Celtic characters, also I also find to be a pain. Um, I, did, I didn't have a problem personally, but and it's a me thing. It's the same. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy Aaron Store, but I do the, the font on his text is a bit annoying for me. Yeah, okay. Uh, and this is kind of the same thing. It's even even more extreme here though. Um, but. Yeah, so so Batman deals with the fact that he was frozen in that in the you know the the Irish sector, a town, and he's kind of talked through it by Alfred, who can still talk to him over the comms and kind of gets him out of like dodge, uh, and he comes back. He's like, "This was magic, Alfred. I don't know what's going on, but this was magic. It's unmistakable." Uh, I, I do appreciate that because that kind of plays off the detective stuff that we had, mm. you know, where he's like, "Alfred, have you ever felt magic?" And Alfred's like, "No, not like not myself." It was, it was like. Right, oh, well, that's the thing. You, you can't mistake it. You know, once you feel it, you know how it feels, and that's it. Yeah. And I like that Batman's kind of like, a, like he just, he's instantly like repelled by it because he, he hates dealing with it because he, he's a man of logic. He's a man of science and detective. And yeah, he knows it. the problems that come with magic. Yeah, so I, I like that. Um, and meanwhile, Wonder Woman's just kind of try to like stop the armies and Tyrion the Gog from fighting because, like, you know, they all suspect T- T- that this. Tyrion Nog. Tyrion Nog. Tyrion Nog? Yeah. No, Tyrion Nog. Okay, sure. <laughs> See, hence why I don't like these Celtic words. I I, I struggle to remember them. Clearly. Because a lot of them are... Here's my problem with a lot of them, is that I feel like with most other languages, I'm okay reading them, because even if I have trouble saying them out loud in some cases, I understand the concept of the word and what it's supposed to sound like, right? Whereas with the Celtic words, there's times where I have to stop and think about how I just say it in my head so I can read it. Oh, yeah, okay. And that slows me right down. Uh, So... But hey, uh, so so I wonder who's trying to stop them from like going to war. Or, or yeah, because the... we got the the Fomori and the and the Dinan Didanan fighting now at war because the king's dead. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaving you to say the words. Yes, they're 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 going to war, and Wonder Woman basically steps in and like splits them up, and like one of them yeah. is not very happy that she's doing that. Yeah, that's the Fomori, the demony yeah. one. Yeah, how dare you touch me? The other one, we got Finn McCool. Finn McCool, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't expecting him to pop in. Uh, so no, so so it's just doing all that. But that's basically the whole issue. I, I feel like we've described the entire plot. Uh, no, I agree. There's the only other subplot that we haven't talked about is the oh. the old man in Gotham. Yeah, the homeless dude in Gotham. Yeah, yes. who who knows something is connected to all this and is clearly going to line up link up with some uh, everything else. It wouldn't surprise me if he's somewhere connected to the death of the the, the king. But uh, possibly they talk a lot because we we do get a little bit where they talk about how they can't access the world as easily as they used to do because Tinano is accessed through you know they're like okay you have to get through these portals these doorways 
and they're not as prevalent as yeah because it, it sounds like if he is a Celtic figure he kind of lost his memory or something because he was trying to get back and he thought it was under Ireland but it wasn't right it's because yeah. I think so the idea is that they, they assumed it was under Ireland because he, he points out it's where three ley lines meet is where the portal is like the, the entrance mm. and presumably there were places like that in Ireland which is why they thought oh yeah it's here we found them that's why it's under here but as he points out, you know, as as we've evolved as a civilization, we've built and you know concrete and all these things over these points so that is no longer accessible. So presumably, all the ones in Ireland have been covered up. So he's happened to have found this spot in Gotham that that has these these properties that he needs. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I, I don't love it. It's kind of like I think I think as I feel like a bit. It's a bit of a, a task to read it. You know. I, 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 I'm not excited about it because I know it's going to be a bit more of a task to read. Um, I don't want to use the word chore. I wouldn't say I wouldn't go as far as say chore, but it's yeah. it's definitely in a weird place for me where I, I'm genuinely liking what the story's doing. I like the art a lot, obviously. Uh, it's but, gorgeous, yeah. Especially when Batman was kind of like you know not quite hallucinating, but some of the pages when he was like stumbling through the crowds of it was a bit twisted, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, everyone standing still. I like that stuff quite a bit. Um, so that's all looking good. Uh, obviously, it ends with Wonder Woman actually showing up in the Batcave to say, "Hey, Bruce, I need your help. Yeah. You're, you're a detective." Uh, and yeah, so I, 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 I do love you know Batman's face when he says "magic." It almost it's almost like he's spitting it out. Yeah, the magic. It's kind of, it's kind of like me when I see, I see uh, like Game of Thrones or, or or just magic, Lord of the Rings. Oh, it's magic. Yeah, yeah, me and Batman. Yeah, <laughs> not 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 a lot to compare between us, but yeah, the test of magic. Yeah, yeah, you do have that, don't you? Yeah, we do, we do. Uh, but hey, uh, so that's, 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 I thought it was a fine issue, uh, but maybe just a touch uh, decompressed. And uh, I, That's fair. I don't mind decompressed, but I think there's like decompressed where I like the style of decompressed, whereas here I just kind of felt like, you know. I think you, you'll feel it now monthly. I think it'll be fine collected yeah because I, I think the stuff that drug de- dragged the issue down was probably the the stuff actually in tier nog with the uh wonder woman like talking them down because there was, was a lot of debating back and forth and it was ultimately all the same thing of oh we want to kill this kid because we just believe it's him and they were like no it's not us and we, we are supposed to stay here and you know i, I really liked her showing them the, the lasso and, and kind of going through that stuff with her and any you know it's the mm. clash of cultures between her her gods and these ones yeah that holds no weight here yeah and all so, I could think was nothing to us. Yeah, all I could think was, well, okay, put it in heaven, make him admit to something stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I think that was the the temptation was probably there, but mm. there, I don't think he'd react too well to that. Probably not. She's one of them. She can punch him in the face. It's fine. <laughs> That's not very diplomatic of her, though, is it? Pfft. Pfft. Fairy folk. <laughs> no need for diplomacy here. <laughs> this isn't a country like like Justice League. This is just straight up. No, but it is, a, it is a culture, and it is a, a place that has its own complex relations. It's a made-up culture, it's fine. <laughs> sure, Wonder Woman's a made-up character. Don't give me that bullshit. Yeah, but she's from a proper made-up place like uh, Themyscira. <laughs> I'm sorry, how is that a proper made-up place and Tiernan Oak's not? Because I can pronounce most of the words that come from Themyscira. <laughs> Your definition of proper is not the one that most people would I'm agree sorry. With. Amazons, fairies. <laughs> Amazons, fairies. And demons. And, oh, uh, demons. Half of them are demons, be fair. All right, okay. Demons and fairy folk. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, 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 I'm just, honestly, I'm just trying to wind you up. But I know, I know. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it's very pretty. Uh, and I think the story is serviceable to solid, but not necessarily, you know, I'm intrigued to, for it to get into the actual detective. Oh yeah, well, stuff. once Batman's actually investigating this and he's like trying to put up with all these these weirdos, then yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah, that, that should because Wonder Woman's kind of at home in this stuff. It's 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 different to her, but she's kind yeah. of okay. I get it. Batman's out of his element. Yeah. So no, that, that, that could prove interesting with issue three. So uh, there you go. That's Brave and the Bold, uh, which will take us on to Red Hood and the Outlaws number sixteen. Uh, you got you got your your man Scott Lobdell, and who's on the art? Uh, it's Dexter Soy again. That's still okay. So pretty pretty cons- sure, anyway. Just give me a second to consistent. Check, yeah. Give it that. It's consistent. It is Dexter Soy. Does he's not done all of it, but he's done most. Hmm. 
uh, you know, so credit where it's due. So, uh... so I'm going to start off by saying I was really confused when this issue opened. I thought I'd pick, like, I because obviously I, I always go, right, what issue am I on? You know, I go, all right, oh, the last one was the last one. Okay, I'm on this one next. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So? And I, I thought I'd missed an issue when I started reading it. Because it ended with, uh, you know, uh, Kate taking, you know, Red Hood and that out of the the cave. The last issue. Hold, on, hold just... on, hold on. What Kate? Kate Kane. Okay, Kate Kane. See, yeah. that's the thing. When I don't actually read it, I just hear you talk about it every month. I completely forget everything you said no, last that's time. Fair. The, the, the last <laughs> issue, there's a bunch of stuff in the back cave. Right. Okay. Okay. But. This issue opens with the, you know, it's Jason in, in Bell Reeve being interrogated by Captain Boomerang. I'm like, did I miss something? I feel like I missed something. Hmm. Uh, no, it, it turns out you know, Kate just dropped him off at Bell Reeve. It's like, ah, your, your wall is problem now. <laughs> Which, I guess, makes sense. Okay, so why was this confusing? Because it didn't tell me that immediately. It All just right. starts in this interrogation, and it's not until like three or four pages in where it was All like, right. oh yeah, Kate dropped us here. But here's, here's the million dollar question. Is Bizarro still smart? He is, for now, although there's very little of him in this issue. Okay. All right. Although when he is there is the best stuff. But uh, So, you know, J- Jason breaks out of this interrogation. He runs off to try and find Armis. Who is being having her own interrogation, although less physical? You know, they're actually like, you know, they've got him chained up. They've got guns to his head for Jason. You've got Harley Quinn doing a a therapist session with Artemis, which okay. could be fun, but it kind of doesn't really do anything with it. It just starts, and and I was just like, this is bullshit. I didn't say any of this stuff because Harley's like, right, so you were telling me about your mother, and I was just like, no, I didn't. And she's like, can you just go with it? No. I'm like, all right, fine. Then she pulls out a big mallet. And Artemis pulls a big axe to her, and they have a bit of a, a scuffle that we don't really see. You you see them you know, start to face off, and then that's it. It just cuts to, oh, Artemis won, which is really disappointing. I feel like that would have been like the high point, right? Big giant mallet yeah, versus big yeah. giant axe. Uh, potential in that. Honestly, the, the therapy session sounds like it's got potential. Like I feel like, it, it, no, Har- it does, honestly, almost any villain having therapy from Harley sounds entertaining. It does, but it's only like two pages long, and it's like not that much of it until. So it's what's the like, bulk of it then? Is it Jason and? This is I'm. Bear in mind, Jason was like for seven or eight issue, uh, seven or eight pages was his thing and his breakout. Then you have Artemis and her breakouts another page. Then you have the meet up. Hmm. And you know, they're like, oh, just like, oh, I was coming to save you. And so, like, oh, what made you think I couldn't get out on my own? You know, you know, usual stuff. So then they go through and it's like, right, okay, let's go find Bizarro. And they get there and he's sitting there still with his, his glasses on, being all posh and smart, having a cup of tea with Waller. Which is, you know, an amusing image. I will I'll give him that. All right, okay. But, what could they be talking about, I imagine? <laughs> <laughs> They were uh, they were dis- discussing uh, the, our relationship over tea and these delicious mayo and cucumber sandwiches. You simply oh. must try one. Oh. I, know. I, hate, look, I, hate, look, I love mayo, but I hate mayo with a passion. Sandwich. If mayo is touched food, I can't have that food. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's that simple. Yeah. It, that's the thing. See when people say, "Oh, why did oh you got a burger and they put mayo? On. Why did you scrape it off?" Because it, it's sauce. It, the, the, it, it, no matter how much I scrape, the 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 after effect will be there. Oh, I'm with you, I'm with you. Sauce, you can take off a dry thing. A dry thing you can take off of a food and it'll be okay to eat if you don't like the thing that you took off. Yeah. But if it's a sauce, if it's wet, it's ruined. Do you know what I'm trying to think? I don't know if there's any sauces that I don't like. There's like, Obviously, I'm more keen on some than others. There's some that I'll never choose, but if it's there, I'll eat it. I don't think there's any that I'll outright go, I don't like that sauce. Um... I'm not a big mustard guy either. I mean, I, I don't detest it the same way I do mayonnaise, but yeah, it, it depends on the type of mustard. Because you know, the, but there, there are some mustards I do quite like on, especially on a burger. But mm. there are others that I wouldn't touch. So I guess. Yeah, most of the others. I mean, obviously, you get really weird ones that are not as common that I might not like. But yeah, but they don't. Ba- they basically don't count. Yeah. 
You know, uh, the, the rest of the main ones, sure. Anyway, Red Hood, you're, you're avoiding the, the top uh, topic yeah, at hand. Am. But yeah, they're all talking and they're like, okay, there's there's stuff going on, basically. There's these civilizations under the earth that have got this advanced technology. There's four of them. And three of them are all powered by this one core from this fourth place. But something's unstable about it, so we better go and sort it out. So they go on a mission with the Suicide Squad. you got Croc, uh, Boomerang... Harley and Deadshot, and that's the end of the issue. They're off. They're in the Arctic because of they go through one of Bizarro's magic doors. If you recall that, arguably they all belong to Suicide Squad anyway. So this makes the whole lot of sense to me. To... It does make sense, but I'm like, oh, well, if I wanted to read this, I'd read a Suicide Squad book. I mean, I don't really want to read this anyway. Yeah, but... you're not. You're not. No, you don't want to read this. And no. if if David decides to change his pick to a Suicide Squad book, you'll read a Suicide Squad book. <laughs> that's how this works. Stop giving people ideas. <laughs> I know. I, I was streaming some games uh, a week or two ago, and uh, I, I was making suggestions for things they can make you read. Oh God, what were you like, suggesting? And I was like, "Oh, if he drops Ben to Superman, you can keep him reading that." <laughs> Ugh. But admittedly, that doesn't get you in a, a different book covered. That because that would just be letting you join in the conversation with me and Matt. Because we'll still be reading that. I, th- I think there's an appeal to whoever has those Patreon that Patreon tier. It's only me that's having to read the shite. Well, not just it's only you, but more specifically to get a, a book covered that is not otherwise being covered on the show. Oh, well, that's true. That's they, true. They get to force you to cover something else so that something else has been talked about. But hey, uh, well, I guess, is that you then? Is that, is that, yeah, it is. Uh, I will say the, the art's nice as always because I do like Dexter Soy and I want him on something good. And uh, it's something I did laugh at is uh, during the therapy session. Harley Quinn, she throws all her papers everywhere and she's basically doing just cutie little drawings of them all, like Bizarro and, and Artemis all tied up and stuff and a nice little touch. Cool. Alright, well with that said we'll get on to our favourites of the week. Uh, so we always do this at the end of the show. Pick our best panel slash moment of the week, best cover, best art and of course our top five books. So that is what's going to happen. Uh, so we'll start with panel slash moment. Do you have one at the ready? Um... Yeah, go on then. I'll 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 go with it. It's a, it's a panel from Nightwing, and it's towards the end, and it's just uh, him you know flying through the sky, swinging on it on his ropes, and with all the the city lights streaking through with through him, and it just looks gorgeous. Okay. And I'm gonna uh, yeah, it's the thing I'm gonna miss most from this Nightwing room. All right, my my pick is easy. It's from Superman. It's the entrance of Gomez, Damien. Uh... Because Gomez Damien with the mustache, I'll allow it. Uh, <laughs> that's just the thing that comes to mind first. I can't, I can't follow it. Uh, so uh, moving on uh, to best best cover of the week, and I don't have one ready for this. Yeah, I'm just flicking through mine quickly. Uh, I'm trying to remember if there was a. Actually, no, no. I think I know what I'm going to go with. Let me just check the the other ones just just to be sure. Uh, but yeah, no, I think I'm going with a variant for Green Lanterns. Uh, the one of Jessica. The one of Jessica. So really nice because I, I think those those have looked really nice from an aesthetic point of view. The the actual drawings necessarily haven't been always been great for the last few of these with the same artist, but this one's particularly nice. So I think I'm going to go with that. No, that is very good. It was one of my options. I think I'm going to give it to Batwoman though. Just the regular cover, the 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 bat symbol with the like the all the the red rose petal with her coming out of it and the, the the text over it. I actually think I prefer the variant for Batwoman. Oh, the variant's very nice as well. All the, the city coming out of a red cape. Yeah, she's sort of jumping down, yeah. Oh, no, it's very nice as well, but I think I just like the... the, the I feel like the, the standard covers are really often overcrowded and overdone, and it's mm. the variants that have some more refined and sleek elements to them. Whereas I really appreciate the, the restraint on this regular cover of, no, this is just the idea. It's, there's no background. It's just a black text, a black wall behind it, and then the stuff on it. Yeah. Uh, best art then for the week uh, that's going to go to Sharp Sharp uh, yeah mm-hmm. it's close don't get me wrong Janin's uh, putting up a good fight but yes uh, there's a lot of solid art this week I feel, you know, I feel like most of the, like Justice League had solid art uh, Green Lanterns had solid art uh there was very few this week where there was like a step down. Obviously, Aquaman had solid, but it's notably different, so it was kind of felt rough because of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I'll go with Sharp as well. I think there was the most atmosphere. And shout out to Batwoman, because I, th- I think that was maybe the best issue that Blank was had oh, on that. Fair. That's why I mentioned that. Uh, okay, so top five books then, uh, to wrap, wrap it up. What have you got? Yeah, this is kind of a weird week. I don't really know. Um, I think I'll go Brave and the Bold, because I did enjoy that. And then Green Lanterns. Superman. Nightwing. (laughs) And then I I think Justice League, I think. I don't really know on on issue five, but uh, number five. But yeah, that'll do. Okay, uh, I think I think my number one Super Sons, and then probably Nightwing, and then I'm thinking Superman, Green Lanterns, and then probably Brave and the Bold number five. Yeah. I, think that, I think that's what I'm sitting at. That's what I'm saying. That so that's not a super convincing week, though, is it? It's not. Uh, that's it. There's a lot of stuff I really like. like every, almost everything with John and Damien this week, <laughs> I was really into. Yeah. Uh, Green Lantern was solid. Nightwing was solid. Uh, but yeah, just just not like the the, the obvious standout that that is easily number one this week. Uh, uh, yeah. And next week's got a fight on its hands. Well, I don't know. As much as we have Doomsday Clock and Metal, I feel like Doomsday Clock is still going to win. I think it might. But I'm I'm just saying that there's a chance for metal, given that it's okay, it's mm-hmm. extra sized, it's got all this stuff that it's Final doing. Final issue, yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on. But with that said, though, what's coming next week? That's what I usually tell you next. Uh, so we do have Doomsday Clock number four, very exciting. We have oh, Dark Knight's no. Metal number six, the final issue of Metal. Uh, so, you know, big things. Uh, we also have Detective Comics 977, Wonder Woman 43, The Flash 43, Batgirl 21, Teen Titans 18, The Terrifics number 2, The Silencer number 3, and Mira Queen of Atlantis number 2. Uh, also out next week, but not being covered by us. Oh, actually, you'll actually no, you'll be covering Hell Jordan and Green Lantern Corps as well next week. I, uh, yeah, assuming we get to it with all these other books. Yeah, yes. I, I, I made these lists and what wasn't included back when you weren't covering that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, so I, yeah, I think we will if we get time. Yeah, Green Lantern Corps 41 as well probably. Uh, but also out, but we're not covering uh, Batman Beyond 18, Trinity number 20, Hellblazer 20, Demon Hell is out number five, Just League of America number 27, Mystic U number three, and Suicide Squad 37. Uh, is Mystic U out? I'm going to get pushed, but at the time I solicited oh, no, this... No, no, it still is. I oh, just I, I, I missed it. Uh, so that's the plan. So obviously a big week next week. I feel like uh, we'll be back to having a really big conversations at the start of the show next week for the, the, the two main books. and then Yeah, just what we need to say is, DC, you are not allowed to give us any news this week. You are forbidden. None. Yes. I don't see them having news this week after... They can't, but... After both solicits and the WonderCon announcements, I feel it's like that... It's been like six or seven weeks in a row. They have to be out of it this week. I feel like we'll get a couple more things next month because... Well, maybe not, actually, because we've got these books for July announced early, so I feel like it might actually be a month or so without any big stuff. Maybe. Maybe. It might Here's be. hoping. Well, I'm not hoping. I want the big news. I just don't want it next week when we've got Doomsday Clock and Metal to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that'll be, the, I, I'm sure, the bulk of the, the run time next week is the conversations of those two. Yeah. Uh, so... That, that is the show. That, that is us. So thank you uh, for listening or watching. We always appreciate it. Uh, if you want to let us know what you think of the books this week, we always love to hear. Uh, they're on Twitter at DC Comics Podcast, uh, on, on the comments on the comments on YouTube or whatever. Uh, we always appreciate it. Uh, like, subscribe, usual jazz. Rate us on whatever podcast app you're using if you're listening to us on an app. Uh, otherwise, if you want to support us, you can have it at patreon.com slash TV. It's worth mentioning our monthly bonus Patreon episode that you can get at the $5 tier. It uh, went up this past week. Uh, me and Connor looked at GSA by Jeff Johns, Volume 1, the newer, thicker trade that came out last year. First 15 issues of the run. We, so, went, uh, we went pretty in-depth on that. Yeah, it was a good two-hour show, that one. Uh uh, so you can check out that. Uh, obviously, that that was like the eighth monthly episode. So they're, they're starting to stack up now. So if you join the Patreon, there's a nice backlog of bonus episodes yeah. to, to have a look at. Um, so yeah, yeah, you have that. There's obviously bonuses for the other stuff that we do, the movies and TV stuff that we could be cover. Uh, also, always worth mentioning, I feel the Television from the Multiverse podcast, which me and Connor do. 
uh, uh, on a Sunday night, usually late Sunday, early Monday, that goes up, where we look at the TV from the week. You know, So obviously this week we had Krypton. Uh, yeah, first episode. particularly worth mentioning. That's already up on YouTube if you want to check that individually. Yeah, but that will be edited into the overall podcast and then episode two onwards will only be part of the podcast. And uh, uh, s- Spoiler, it's shockingly decent. Yes, it's not bad. It's not bad. As, uh, as DC fans that you all are, there are moments that you will just be overjoyed at. Yes, yes, yes. yes. There's, there's some nitpicky elements. There's some things that might be a little mundane going forward. But uh, let's just say when they show the villain in it, uh, there is a there is full on nerdgasm how good it looks. Yeah. So um, yeah. Uh, so check out TV's in the Multiverse as well. Uh, obviously it has its own podcast feed as well. Uh, but that is that is us. So thank you once again for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep reading comics and always remember to never get lost in the Speed Force. Thank you.